of Gaming event. Uh, I'm so excited. I hope you are too. This is a really special day, and uh, I'm excited to do this live on YouTube. Uh, we've, you know, for the past five years, always had these big E3 shows in the summer, and of course, this summer is very different for all of us um, for a number of reasons. And I, I still think it's so important for the community around the world to come together to celebrate games. So uh, over the next hour, we've got an amazing pre-show with uh, some incredible YouTube creators from around the world who will be joining us. Some of them will be joining us live, some will be joining us on tape. And we're just gonna come together to celebrate games. And then at the top of the hour, of course, will be the PlayStation 5 stream that we'll all watch together live right here. And then afterwards, we're gonna have a post show uh, with reactions and uh, some other great stuff as well um, tied to this reveal. Uh, I do think it's just important to mention though, everything that uh, has happened this year so far that has brought us to this state. Uh, you know, if you asked me in January if I'd be sitting in a spare room here in Los Angeles broadcasting a, the PlayStation 5 event, which is going to be this pre-taped video, it just would have been inconceivable to me. But um, we've obviously gone through a lot over the past few months uh, with, you know, the COVID pandemic and how that's impacted the entire video game landscape, especially for events. Uh, and then, you know, more recently, with, of course, um, everything that's that's happened um, with the sort of systemic racism and violence against the black community. Um, it's been disheartening to sort of see everything that's happened over um, the past few weeks and spirit breaking for a lot of us, I think, um, to have 2020 be a year that has, has come with uh, so much that I has weighed on us. And I don't, I don't want to do anything more than just acknowledge that right now and say that I think one of the great things about games is that it brings us together as a community. I've always loved games that it allows us to play different roles and it, it, it see things from different perspectives and understand the world in new and unique ways. Um, and I think we found a lot of comfort in gaming and the fact that this is a new console year is really exciting. Um, and I hope this is a moment where we can kind of for a couple of hours just gather as a community around the world and celebrate uh, how much this passion point means to all of us and get excited about the future of this medium. Um, you know, today is about PlayStation, but I also think it's about the future of games uh, and how exciting gaming is that it's this blend of technology and entertainment. And that means the games always get better. And like, this is a big moment to see what the next five to seven years of gaming is going to look like. Uh, and Sony has called the ball by saying this is the future of gaming. So I'm really excited to see what they have for us. Um, so anyways, uh, we've got a lot of great uh, guests that will join us over the next hour um, to talk about our predictions for PlayStation um, and what we expect to see. But before we get into that, I wanted to kind of recap a little bit on what we do know so far about PlayStation 5. Uh, and we will have, again, as I mentioned, the live event, which we can all watch together here live at the top of the hour. So thank you for joining us uh, in these kind of unusual circumstances. But I'm, I'm, Really, really excited about what we're about to see today. So PlayStation 5, um, a lot of people have been wondering, what are we going to get to see today? Uh, PlayStation 4, I remember being in New York City for the PlayStation meeting, which was, I think, at the end of February. It's like February 20th, if I remember right. Uh, and that was a big moment of, of PlayStation, and people wondered, were they going to show the box? Well, they didn't, but they showed a lot of great games and talked about the system. This is different. This is not a PlayStation meeting. It's PlayStation 5, the future of gaming. We're obviously going to see games, and that's going to be a big part of it. But people want to know more about the PlayStation 5 hardware. What can we expect? Are we going to see the box today? I don't know. It feels like it's going to be more about the games today. Uh, but one thing we have seen is the PlayStation 5 controller, um, the DualSense. Uh, that was uh, sort of surprisingly dropped on um, the internet uh, a little while ago, and you can see it here. Um, really cool uh, two-tone look to it. Um, and one of the things that is unfortunate given the fact that we're all kind of staying at home and not going to events is I haven't had a chance to hold this. I don't think many people have. And when you talk to a lot of game developers, they talk about the haptics in the controller and a lot of the interesting things that Sony is doing with this controller. Um, and it, it looks really unique and different. It's a bit of a redesign from the traditional, um, you know, DualShock. Uh, but from what I've heard, there's a lot of interesting technology inside of that controller. So it looks futuristic, but also has a lot of futuristic technologies in it. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll learn a little bit about that um, today. In terms of the games, we know that we're going to see PlayStation 5 games, and we've gotten some hints of what PlayStation 5 might be capable of. Many of you probably watched Mark Cerny's uh, talk back in March. I think it's up to like 15 plus million views on YouTube um, about his road to, to PlayStation 5, and he's such a, 
a brilliant author and architect of the platform, uh, thinking of how we can really push the medium forward with this dedicated hardware and a new console generation. And you've probably heard about the SSD drive in the PS5 and how that's going to enable new types of games and experiences, not just better graphics. Uh, and that's something hopefully we'll hear a bit about today. The first game, though, for PlayStation 5 was uh, that we saw was at the Game Awards back in December. You may remember there was a title named Godfall that was revealed with a trailer um, near the top of the show. And uh, a lot of people sort of uh, got excited about it. And it was a bit of a surprise that the PlayStation logo was on that trailer. Um, and it was, I think, the first confirmed game that was going to be coming to uh, the PlayStation 5. Uh, so Godfall, we don't know if it'll be included in today's event, um, but it, it, they've been teasing a little bit on social media with some visuals and whatnot over the past few weeks. So I would not be surprised if we see something on that today. But that was sort of our first glimpse of PlayStation 5. And then, of course, um, you know, the other thing that, that recently happened that got a lot of excitement was the Unreal Engine 5 uh, reveal that I was honored to do alongside Tim Sweeney and the team at Epic Games. Uh, and obviously a lot of speculation and excitement around uh, what Unreal Engine 5 is going to be able to do with PlayStation 5. You can see a little bit of footage here of it. It's got a, a new technologies in it, including Nanite, that allows them to do incredibly detailed worlds and full global illumination. This is all happening in real time in the game world. And as many of you know, Unreal Engine powers a lot of the big games out there um, across the industry. So this was a, a great glimpse at where games might go in the future. And this is a technology demo. It's not, we're not going to see this game announced today at the event or anything. I think this was really a tech demo, but it is playable. Um, and I think captured all our imaginations about where games are, are going to go. And no, this is not probably what every game shipping this holiday season is going to look like. But uh, when you, you know, see that flight moment with her flying through the air and you, you just get excited about that, whether it's two years away or four years away, we're eventually going to get there. And that's what's so exciting about games um, that, you know, you see that and you just get naturally excited about the, the future of this medium. So um, that's a little bit of kind of what we know so far about PlayStation 5. Uh, you know, I expect we'll have some new game announcements today. Uh, Sony's first party studios have been very quiet um, about what they've been working on for PlayStation 5. Of course, we know The Last of Us Part 2 is coming out next week from Naughty Dog and then Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, from Sucker Punch for PS4. So they're two big PS4 games still to come, but what Sony's Worldwide Studios group and Herman Hulst and the team have been putting together for PlayStation 5, hopefully we'll get a little bit of a tease of that today. Um, one thing I have heard is that, you know, this is the, and I think Jim Ryan, the CEO of PlayStation, has said, this is the start of the sort of PlayStation 5 story. It's not everything all in one event. So, um, you know, there will likely be things that will be held until later this year. And like, will we see the console? Will every game get announced? It's like, I think we're in a mode now where game companies are spreading their news out a little bit. Um, so I think we'll have a lot of news today, but it doesn't mean that's everything. And I'm sure there will be more to share um, over the coming months as we lead into holiday 2020. So um, it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, the countdown clock is, uh, is up and we are ready to, uh, get onto it, uh, about 45 minutes until the, the live stream starts, um, from PlayStation. And we're going to run that here live. So we'll, we'll watch that. We're not going to commentate over it. We really want to just all experience it together live and then we'll come back with the post show after. Um, but right now we're going to bring in some special guests from around the world to talk about PlayStation and what we expect. Uh, and one of the things that was important to me with this show is, Let's bring everyone together. Uh, we've got some great YouTube creators from around the world that'll be joining us. And even from far off places like India, they've submitted videos. And I hope you'll see some familiar faces that you've seen on YouTube, but also other gamers be introduced to them around the world. And, and what unites us all is this love of gaming and PlayStation. So um, let's kind of jump right into it with our first panel and uh, welcome our first guest, someone you know very well, who's I think sufficiently excited about all things PlayStation. We've got Matt Pat joining us, uh, the game theorist. Hello, Matt. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you on as well. We're excited about all things PlayStation. We've also got uh, Jack Septicai joining us live. Hello, Jack. Hi, Papa Jeff. How's it going? <laughs> it, it's going well. Your camera's looking good. Um, you we too. Can we just compliment Thank each other's depth much. of field right now? I was going to say, we're, we're doing our best for PlayStation, uh, which is exciting. <laughs> and also, uh, joining us live from Los Angeles, my good buddy, Lamar Wilson. Lamar, what's going on? Doing well, man. How, how are you doing? Good to see you. Got some generic superheroes behind me so we don't get copyright 
Uh, I'm, no I'm, hints, I'm right? No, none. Chess game not PS5 about to be announced? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Lamar, great to have you with us. So, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. at Jack Lamar, we're going to talk a bit about all things PlayStation Five here. Um, first of all, let me turn it over to you guys. Like, what what do you want to see today? Like, you know, it's like it's PlayStation Five, the future of gaming. So, you know, everyone's sufficiently hyped. But like, what's your expectation? Maybe let's let's start with uh, with you, Matt. Like, what what do you want to see today? You know, I really want to see the box. Honestly, I know that that's in question, but there have been so many interesting images of what the hypothetical design for this thing looks like. I just want to look, no, is this actually going to look like my futuristic space grill, or is it going to be another kind of like flat black rectangle? Um, don't get me wrong, I'm excited about the games. Obviously, there's a lot of PlayStation exclusive titles that I really want to see more footage of, but I mean, to really feel like this is a big announcement, to me, I need to see physical evidence of what this thing is going to look like. All right, fair fair point. Um, yeah, we will see. I, I I don't know. I mean, they've they, Sony's been doing things in an interesting way this year. It's like they might also just like drop that on like Twitter right before the event or something. Or who knows? It's <laughs> right, like, it's just going to appear in an Instagram story and then fade away within twenty four hours. I mean, you have no idea, right? Um, it's right. Not, it's not, there's not a physical event, right? Even what this video is, like, is it going to be, will people be talking? Will it just be trailers? Will it be, you know, slick or everyone on webcam? Like, no one knows. Um, Jacksepticeye, what's, uh, you know, I know you love the game, so I, and you love PlayStation franchises, so I'm sure you have some, some hopefully some predictions on uh, what you'd like to see game-wise too, right? Yeah, I, I want to see NAC 3. Everyone's waiting for it. Where is it? I want to see an announcement for it finally. Mark Cerny is um, sitting at home right now and he just <laughs> laughed at it. Write that down. Write that down. Um, I personally, I keep hearing rumors of Bloodborne PlayStation 5 PC, and we've seen Sony come out and say that certain games are coming to PC. Horizon is coming. So I'm really excited to potentially get that. A bunch of people who are verified on Twitter keep saying it, so it must be true. And I just want to see maybe Horizon 2, uh, since Herman took over, maybe that'll be his new thing to show off. He can show us what the PS5 can do with that because it looks so good on PS4 already. And maybe, maybe our boy Corey will come back and surprise us all with a new God of War. But that's, that's, that's pipe dream. That's out there with Knack 3 for me right now. But I hope both happen. <laughs> Manager. Well, but it's, the thing is, Sony has so many amazing studios around the world and so many franchises. You said those are all like plausible things that they would do at some point, but it's like, will they announce all those today or just a couple? Like, that's what we'll sort of have to have to see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good, good predictions. Uh, Lamar, uh, what's for you? What, what, what would excite you? What would surprise you and delight you today if Sony talked about it? Yeah, so I really like Sony and the PlayStation for their exclusive. I think that's where they really stand out. So I want to see Ratchet and Clank. I want to see a brand new one. I, I've loved that since the PS3. I didn't get a chance to play it on the PS2, so I definitely want to see more of that. New Spider-Man game has to happen, or I'm going to uh, have an uprising. It just it needs to happen. And, uh, of course, I'll go with Jack with the Horizon 2. Definitely needs to happen. And who doesn't want to see hardware, just like Matt said? So hardware, uh, Spider-Man, I'm good. Okay. So these are all, you know, franchises we love. Sony's done such a great job with them. It's interesting that, you know, The Last of Us 2, which is probably one of the defining games of this generation, is like next week. So there's still lots of PS4 left. Right. Based on what you guys have, have read and heard about PS5, like how do you how do you want or how do you think games are gonna change in the next generation? Because PS4 is already, you know, so incredible and we're seeing amazing graphics and content. Like, what's gonna make you guys jump to PS5? Is it just that you want, you know, you, Sony delivers for you, so you always want to get the next one, or is there things about it that you get excited about, you know, conceptually on, on like, what the leap is? I think for me, if I can jump in, I think for me it's all about what narratives does this new generation of council open up, right? I think the biggest question I have going into these announcements, both with the PS5 and with the Xbox Series X, is what is the differentiating factor for why we still need consoles, right? Obviously, it's it's more tech. Obviously, the graphics are improved. The speeds are faster. But what is the leap that's going to change gaming? And to me, so much of this like photorealism that we're getting in gaming right now is opening the door to deeper narratives, stuff that's going to be more immersive, stuff that's going to really put us in the mind's eye of the characters we're playing as. 
And I'm hoping that like, yeah, in addition to kind of your, your fun games that you can play with friends on, on cycle and on repeat and things like that, I really want to see more games like Last of Us Part Two. That's the sort of thing that's really going to differentiate and say, hey, we are a storytelling art form here in gaming, and we have the technology now to really achieve the sky's the limit for whatever these fictional narratives are. Yeah, I, I think deep storytelling is, is what's important here. I think that's where Sony really excels, uh, yep. uh, as I mentioned about their exclusives. So seeing really good stories and and having it where it really feels like you're engrossed in it, where there's no low times or minimal low times where you're going from uh, story event to story event. So you're really diving deep into it. That's what I like about uh, st games like The Last of Us 2, Horizon, which was a, a Zero Dawn, which is a great game. And I'm just looking for yeah. more depth. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the stuff we're seeing with like the technology with Unreal Engine 5 and everything, where everyone's talking about ray tracing, that's the next big thing that we're going to see. And I'm, I'm sure lighting quality and texture quality and everything and streaming budgets and all that stuff gets like, it just gets bigger as the generations go on. And that's always an important thing. But for me, what's really interesting is considering I've been playing Bloodborne and all those games again recently, the, the load times are just obnoxious at times. And when you go to something, I remember playing XCOM 2 on my PlayStation and then going to PC and the load times are like, 10 seconds versus a minute sometimes. And that that is what I'm really looking forward to, just getting into the game, getting the OS to be faster, going between store, between apps, between games, and then just seeing now that it actually supports 120 FPS, I want to see if we finally, are we going to keep doing that thing where we get photo real, but stay at 30, or are we going to start breaching forward and go more or less photo real, maybe even the same, or go to 60 or even, are we going to see games really push to that 120 FPS limit? Because, again, so many people have PCs now and hardware there has become affordable in the mid-tier range where people can get 120 FPS that I think that people are kind of going between both now and we have so much cross-play happening that it'll be really interesting to see how fast the hardware is to push all those. Because graphics are always yeah. going, to get, going to get better, mocap will get better, and the narratives and everything will keep evolving as we go. But I'm really excited to see just how strong and fast this system is, especially after listening to Mark Cerny talk about it and talk about yeah. the 3D audio and talk about how fast that SSD is. It'll be really interesting to see it in practice. Yeah, I, I, they said that we should make sure to watch the event with headphones on, which I thought was curious because they're like yeah. some interesting 3D audio in it. So um, you guys are all we would hear Mark Cerny's voice office. all around our heads. <laughs> Surrounding your yeah, heads. It's like... It's going to be interesting to me to see what they do. As you said, I think you guys captured it right. Like, there's some amazing franchises. Um, you know, that whole narrative a few years ago, but like the single player game was dying, I think has kind of passed us by. And people love great stories and incredible, rich, detailed worlds, which Sony delivers. But as Matt said in the background, there's a question of, you know, do we still need a console? What is going into the cloud? And, you know, how's your phone going to interface with this? And, and it'll be interesting to see how, how much this presentation is about the games versus like the hardware story and here's the UI and here's what we're doing with PlayStation now and all these other things or is it just going to be like hey let's capture your imagination with these incredible worlds and games and all the other stuff will come later and I don't know how technical it will be because obviously Mark Cerny's talk was extremely technical um, yeah. as he said in his talk now now comes the fun part and I think this is the start of the fun today so before we wrap up is there anything that Sony could do to screw this up today? Like, expectations are really high. Um, you know, they're, I mean, people love PlayStation. You know, the system has done incredibly well around the world. They make great games. Uh, you know, the rumors are a little out of control, I think, in terms of things that some yeah. people are expecting <laughs> yeah. today. So is there anything that you guys would, would say, like, hey, if this doesn't happen, I'll be disappointed, or, um, you know, things that you want them to do that they may not do. Cause that's the other thing is like, there's, I, I worry that there's so much expectations that if there's not, you know, 12 first party games announced, people are like, what happened? Um, anything for you guys that, that might concern you if they do or don't. I, yeah. I feel like they, they really need to either, they might not show off what the actual console looks like. And everyone really wants to see what it looks like. And we all see that dev kit with the giant V and I, <laughs> part of me kind of loves it, but either show off the console or give us a price. I think if people get either one of those, it'll give us something to kind of bite down on and to kind of look forward to. Of course, show games. I feel like more games and less talking is always a good point. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, me, I, I was going to say the same thing. The, the biggest place 
that they can misstep, I think, is price point, right? That's always the area that people are most sensitive about. It's the one that directly affects us as the consumers. And, you know, when they announced the PS3 price, it was a big punch in the gut to a lot of people who were excited about this. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm not that excited about this. Um, and I don't think we're going to get a price today. If I were to make a prediction, I think they're going to wait to see what Xbox has in their, whatever their next announcement is, and then Fair we'll point. get the price point a little bit down the line. But if they are brave enough to kind of launch a price out there, that's the one thing that I think will absolutely sink the ship if it's too high. Yeah, I'm a little different uh, on this. Obviously, I want, I want to see all of that, but I really want to see gameplay. I, I think trailers mm -hmm. are nice. and I know this is the summer and that's when trailers come out. But I, I, I think people want to see how this runs with, with actual gameplay, even if it's just a little bit. And so uh, I'm more concerned about that. And I think there'll be some people yeah. disappointed if that doesn't uh, come to fruition. Yeah, uh, they, that's a great they point, said Omar, because it's like it's... Yeah, sorry, Jack. No, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think you're right, because if it's just a wall-to-wall -wall trailers and CG trailers and everything, it's people like, I want to see what these games are actually going to look and play like. And even after the Unreal demo everyone's like it's real time but is that real and like just you know it'd be amazing if someone just picks up a controller and just plays something right um and we'll see this is like it's such a new different format to have this coming out as like a pre-recorded video um that we're all watching and it's like you know it was probably completed a week ago and sitting on someone's hard drive and it's like hey we're about to hit play um so yeah it's gonna be interesting all right well thanks for joining us guys uh we will all watch together and it's gonna be i think a fun day for for all of us to uh to see our 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 uh our dreams uh, come to life, hopefully in the next half hour or uh, the internet <laughs> will rage. So we'll see what, what's in store, but I'm uh, excited about it. And thanks for joining us uh, under these unusual circumstances. Hopefully we'll see all you guys in person uh, soon. Yeah, thanks for, for having for me. For sure. Thanks for having us, awesome. Jeff. Right, thanks guys. Matt, Pat, Jack, Scepter Guy, and uh, Lamar Wilson. Great to have you guys with us. Um, now, another person who uh, was with me for the PlayStation 4 uh, reveal in new york city is a guy named kyle bossman um kyle and i worked together back when i worked at mtv and uh spike tv and at the time kyle was a, a production assistant on my show for tv and the producer of that show jeremy hoffman hoffman and i came up with an idea in 2013 to put him on camera for the first time because we thought he's just such a cool interesting guy um and we came up with this idea of like why don't you do this video about what you think sony should do and not do at their PlayStation meeting. And we ran that video in 2013 in February as Kyle's first ever on-camera appearance. And ever since then, you've probably seen him on the internet. He's such an incredible voice and uh, creator in his own right. So I asked Kyle this weekend, I said, hey, what, you want to do a PlayStation 5 do's and don'ts for what Sony should do this time around? And he, he graciously agreed. So uh, without further ado, here is Kyle Bossman with his do's and don'ts for the PlayStation 5 event. Hello, I'm Kyle Bossman, expert video watcher. Here are my do's and don'ts for Sony's PlayStation 5 reveal. Do gameplay demos. So from what I understand, you've already said you're broadcasting this stream at 1080p 30 frames per second. Any case you're going to try to make for graphical fidelity and higher frame rates is lost there. That's like that's like opening a can of beef ravioli and going, trust me, this smells very good. We, we can't. Uh, so I do think that today, sustained gameplay demos will be important. Last year, Mark Cerny showed Wired a demo of Spider-Man flying through New York City at the speed of a jet. Why haven't we seen that yet? I'd watch that for four hours. Don't overvalue a title reveal. So I know trailers gotta happen, they serve a purpose. I wanna talk about a very particular type of trailer, the title reveal trailer. These are trailers that you don't get to see much of the actual game, right? It's mostly a tease, and then the impact is the title at the end. These get the people who watch videos uh, to scream and push over chairs. This is all publishers ever want. However, much like a promise ring, title reveal trailers are hard to pull off. If you want people to get excited by just your title, you must be one of two things, an unlikely sequel or long presumed dead. If you do not exhibit either of these qualities, we either already know you're coming or don't know what you're talking about, man. So you will have to show more of your game. If you're still confused, let's play a little game called Is the Title Enough? Spider-Man 2, no. Horizon Zero Dawn sequel, no. Project Legendfall, no. Bloodborne 2, yup. Ratchet and Clank, butt left. No, 
Silent Hill. Sorry, this actually would have been an easy yes, but it leaked too much. You gotta show some of that game. God of War, Ragnarok. No. Todd Howard's Reverse Hog Troth. No. Batman, Arkham Anything. No. Eep Escape 4, Monkey Ranch. I'll cry. Demon Souls Remastered. No. NASCAR in hell. You know what? I'm very interested. Do be fashionably humble. The whole world is depressed and angry right now, with the exception of New Zealand, of course. We have less tolerance for smugness than ever before. So if you're coming out here with your webcam, your laptop microphones, behave yourselves. Nobody wants to see your porcelain dining room, Shuhei Yoshida. In fact, it's probably worth taking a page out of the playbook of late night talk show hosts, finding the most relatable corner of your presumably very expensive home to stash your camera in. It works for me. I'm in a hot tub right now and you'd never know. Don't knack. That's all the advice I have for you today, Sony. If you do those do's and don't do those don'ts, I'm positive you will continue to smash Instagram gaming records for years to come. Good luck. Kyle Bossman. Thank you for that, Kyle. I always had to have a little knack mention in there. Um, all right. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, lots of do's and don'ts. And as I think we've all been saying, we don't know quite how Sony is going to present this today. Uh, will there be real people in it? Will it just be a voiceover like a Nintendo Direct? Will it be uh, all trailers? Like we really have no idea. And they've been uh, you know, extremely secretive about what this uh, presentation is. We know it's about an hour in length, a little bit longer than an hour from what we've heard. Um, but exactly how long it is and what format it takes um, is an opportunity, I think, to uh, learn about games in, in hopefully a new and different way. And Sony always does their events um, in a really unique way. So I'm, I'm personally really excited to see what the team at PlayStation has put together. Um, now, one new thing we're going to do this year is meet some new game creators and hear from some YouTube creators from around the world. Uh, one of the things over the past few years that has really excited me is seeing with the Game Awards, how it's growing around the globe. And a brand like PlayStation is truly global and the world will be watching today. So a few YouTube creators from around the world sent in videos talking a little bit about their excitement for uh, today's event. And we'll take a look at those now. Hey everyone, how's it going? I am like so many others so excited about PlayStation 5. I remember as a kid when the first one was released and how amazing it looked and then the second, the third and even with the fourth one waiting in line at midnight the day of the release getting the box and I remember the excitement of opening it, turning it on, grabbing the controller and testing the games for the first time. I know I'm going to feel the same way uh, when this one is released. I feel like there's something very special about each PlayStation and how it defines video games for a whole generation, right? Um, I'm really excited to see what new games we get, but I'm also really excited to see more games brought back from the past, kind of like what they've done with the Crash Bandicoot saga or um, Resident Evil remakes, for example. Like, I love that nostalgic thing about you know, these video games that we played when we were kids and things like that. Also super excited about the new ones. I've loved like Spider-Man, for example, like how it looks, how it feels, the freedom, like what are we going to be capable of doing with the games on this new console and how is it going to break with what we've been doing until now, right? So super excited, paying a lot of attention to everything that you guys say today. I hope you're super excited too. And I'll see you, well, I'll see you online playing PlayStation 5. I am so excited for the PS5 coming out because, you know, honestly, this is a, a system that has represented a lot in my family over the years. You know, we've had a lot of fights, a lot of good times and bad times between, you know, battling for loot and champions of Norrath, me and my cousins and, and my uncles trying to outlevel each other, uh, all the way into me and my cousin waking up Christmas morning, both getting copies of one of our favorite games ever, Shadow of the Colossus, and trying to beat both Coloss all the Colossuses against one another on, on a race to finish first while I was running upstairs to see how far he was. And he would come downstairs and check on me and be like, oh yeah, I already beat that guy two Colossus ago. You know, still looking back at that Christmas is one of my favorite moments ever you know i look at god of war 3 and the cinematic experience and story and and the way god of wars have been um so indicative of of, of these consoles and how the development of story and the development of visuals and the development of i think uh trailblazing as far as the industry has come has been um integrated between these amazing franchises and for me ps5 it, it's an opportunity to do more 
It's an opportunity for the new franchises to come out that will sweep our hearts away and really keep us living and breathing in that love of fantasy and a love of gaming and love of community shared uh, through that process that you know inspired me to become a YouTuber to this day. You know, I, I wish that PS5 had all of their lineup ready to go right now because I would dive immediately into it. But I'll patiently wait. I'm really excited for Godfall, to be honest. I think this is a game that, you know, my dad's still playing a ton of Gearbox Borderlands 3 nonstop every day right now. Uh, he and I would have a lot of fun messing around with that one. The visual is obviously stunning. Um, but for me, it, it's, it's an exciting moment when a new console comes out, especially PlayStations, because, again, they're, they're so good at helping to innovate and helping to empower creators creativity and empower new experiences for gamers alike that I can only imagine uh, what this next generation of consoles and especially with the PlayStation 5 uh, is going to hold and the memories that are going to be made for new gamers as well as old gamers like me uh, throughout the next years to come. Very, very excited and uh, couldn't be more happy to, to be around with PlayStation 5. Hey, hola amigas, amigos, yo soy Antrax, soy de México y wow, el día de hoy se presenta la PlayStation 5. Una serie de consolas que sin duda ha marcado mi infancia y la de muchos. Cómo olvidar en la sala cuando jugaba con mi hermana de pequeño. Horas y horas de diversión, de aventura, de experiencias. Y el día de hoy se presenta el futuro de los videojuegos. Sin duda, sin duda, ya muero por probarlo. Y pues vamos a ver qué ha preparado PlayStation. All right, uh, thanks very much, Dan Trax. Uh, we've got more YouTube creators that'll be joining us uh, as we lead up to the live event. Uh, we are about uh, 20 minutes away now from uh, the live stream uh, from PlayStation, uh, and we'll, of course, be running it live right here, and we'll all watch this together. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have a big post show uh, over an hour of additional content um, after the uh, briefing from PlayStation, and I'm really excited to uh, dive into uh, that after the show. Uh, all right, well, right now we're gonna get to another panel. Uh, three more uh, YouTube guests from around the world joining us to talk about their PlayStation memories and what they're looking forward to today. Uh, first up, joining us all the way across the pond, our good buddy, Ali A. Ali, great to have you with us live. Look at that, in the actual hey. setup. I love it. How you doing, man? Great to have you with us. Uh, we've also got uh, Lauren's aside. Uh, Lauren, great to have you uh, with us live. Looking very uh, pink and looking good. I like it. Um, or purple, I guess I should say, right? Um, all right. Uh, also uh, joining us from LA, Valkyrie. Valk, what's up? Hi. What's up? Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> With a candle. I like it. Oh, you're, yeah, bringing the, you're bringing the right mood. <laughs> I like it. All right, this is good. I, I need to I need to get some candles in my setup. I got to do that. All right, great to have you, Ray. So, uh, Ali, Lauren, Ray, uh, this is a big moment for all of us. Uh, let me go around and ask you guys first of all, what's your favorite like PlayStation memory? Like of all the games over the years or anything, we've all been playing PlayStation in different ways. Do you guys have any games or systems or anything that like stand out to you as particularly resonant memories? Um, I actually, my very first gaming, like even memory before I even owned anything was going to my uncle's house and he'd have a PlayStation one, but it would never be set up all the time. And he'd pull it out just for when me and my brother would come over and we'd play like one of the original Lara Croft games. So much fun. That actually got me into gaming. So it all started with PlayStation technically. Oh, that's amazing. I had no idea. All right. Well, that's cool. We'll see. Uh, Lara Croft is always around. I don't know if she'll be there today, but I'm sure there's another <laughs> Tomb Raider. Um, in due time, uh, Ray. What about uh, about you? Like, uh, do you have any favorite memories of in the past of, of things PlayStation related? Oh yeah, my all time favorite memory is I. I always I was always the one that played video games, and I have a younger sister, and she would always just watch me, and it was such a great way for us to bond. And I remember I played Kingdom Hearts in third grade on my PlayStation Two, and my sister would just watch me, would stay up all night, eat junk food. <laughs> And she would just use the cheat book and tell me where all the Dalmatians were and just, I don't know. It's just a great way to like bond with the family. <laughs> Love it. I, 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 the dog. I like, you've got the perfect setup for me. You got the dog, <laughs> the candle. It's like, I, I feel calm all of a sudden. It's like, this is, uh, <laughs> this is the way to do it. All right. Well, yes. Kingdom Hearts, uh, such a classic franchise. Mm. Um, and yeah, we just had the most recent Kingdom Hearts. So I don't know if we'll get another one today, but, but who knows? Um, Maybe. Lauren, um, <laughs> All things PlayStation. Where did it start for you? Do you remember which PlayStation? 
So I missed PlayStation One. My audio is good, right? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, my good. mic. Can hear you now. I missed PlayStation One. Um, my my parents had bought Nintendo sixty four, and they were like, "That's good enough for a while. Like, you guys can play with that." Um, but then PlayStation Two was like when my gaming really took off. Uh, and I would play, yeah, Kingdom Hearts one, two. Uh, SSX Tricky is like one of my favorite games, and it's so hard to find. I recently wanted to like rebuy the PlayStation Two version of it. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was one of my first uh, consoles that had me like gaming for hours. Uh, so holds a special place in my heart, PlayStation 2. Yeah, no, I mean, all of us, I remember like going to the first E3 seeing PlayStation 1 and just like, it, it's been amazing to see the legacy of all these systems. And that's why today I think is, is, is special. Obviously we know, you know, we know a little bit about the system. We've seen the controller. Um, we've seen some hints of some games, but as you guys, like, as we roll into this in 20 minutes now, um, like, what do you guys, ex what do you want to see? Like, what's going to excite you? I mean, the world's in such like a, a weird place right now. Like, like, are there certain games that you really want to see? Do you just want to get excited about graphics and like hear about, you know, the controller and how it's going to work or let, let's start with you, Ali. Like, what, what do you, you know, we'll see if Fortnite um, next gen is there. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would, I would take Fortnite for sure. Um, but for me, having actually come from playing exclusively consoles and recently moving uh, to PC, but still plugging in a controller, uh, my PlayStation 4 controller, uh, it's not very well known, but actually there's a little bit of delay when using your controller on the PlayStation and it's minimal, but I think reducing little things like that will help competitive games. It will help even casual players and match up closer with a PC experience where everything everything's a lot sleeker. There's actually less input delay. Um, obviously, I want to hear more about the uh, FPS and refresh rate that this console can handle. Again, pushing PC sort of specs, uh, loading games quickly. I know everyone wants to see the console. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I will be very happy if it does. I think everyone would be very happy if they show it. Yep. No, that's the big question is like, do you know, what is it going to look like? Cause we've seen the controller and it's different, right? It's that dual tone with the white. So like, is the system going to be white this time or yeah. like, I, I, what are the aesthetics, right? Of PlayStation five. We'll have to see, uh, Ray, what for you, what's like, uh, like what would excite you today? Oh my gosh. I love story games like the dark soul series, bloodborne. I wish oh. that would be such a surprise. If there ever was going to be a Bloodborne 2, which is probably not ever going to happen, but I am looking forward to Elden Ring um, because it's similar to those type of games. Um, so if they actually showed some more stuff on that, I would be so excited. <laughs> but pretty much any story game, I'm just I love looking forward to new games. So give no, me anything what, good. <laughs> you know, and they're so good about, as you said, great narrative and characters and these worlds. Yeah. And they look like so beautiful. And that's what I think, like I always say, the the artistry of these things like can really capture you and even sometimes how they present them and like the dramatic reveal of like what the game is and the character and you don't think it's yeah. an uh, you know an uncharted game and then it is i remember that one year at psx and it's like i'm sure there'll be some theatrical moments to how this stuff is presented and they certainly tease that they think they've tried to duplicate what it feels like to be in a big live room with those like like i remember when the last guardian one year at e3 when it came back and everyone got like so excited um it'll be interesting to see like how they present that because we're all watching at home virtually and there's you know i don't think there's any live crowd right to, to cheer along and react to so it's gonna be different but i agree like those would be amazing things lauren for you like sounds like you know ssx tricky i guess could come back today we don't I would know love but what i want them to put like all the old games <clears throat> on like a streaming catalog where you could just like play them i would love that um i, don't, I doubt that's coming but i think anything because i'm such a big <clears throat> sorry such a big pc gamer um anything that that gives me something a little extra that PC gaming can't. So like the controller I'm super excited about with the haptics. I want to see how that feels. Um, the tri I, I was reading about like trigger tension. So you might be able to get the sensation of like shooting a bow and arrow. Um, just little things like that that I can't get from like a keyboard and mouse setup. Um, I heard that there might be some like new audio things going on that I'm kind of excited about. That's why they were yep. telling people to try and wear headphones for the press conference. Um, so just any, all those little things um, that make me more immersed in the story that I can't get from a PC gaming, like I'm all for, for the con the new console. No, no. And that that's the stuff that is so interesting that they're talking about. You said like new audio technologies, like this amazing controller yeah. and none of us get to hold it. 
um, yet at least. Uh, and he said, like, if the feel of like a bow and arrow, you're exactly right. Like, how is that going to feel? And how do you represent that to people when, um, you know, you just have to watch on a video? So we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, thanks, guys, for joining us. I'm excited to watch it all with you. Um, yeah, so definitely. <laughs> my candle's ready for the post show, I think. That's my big note, Ray. All right. Thanks to Allie, uh, Lauren, and Ray uh, for stopping by. Uh, we've now got another group of YouTube creators from around the world who wanted to stop in and share their excitement for all things uh, PlayStation 5, including two creators from India. Uh, this is exciting to hear from new YouTube creators around the world as well. Um, let's hear from them right now. Hey guys, my name is Garu and I'm a content creator on YouTube and I've been playing games since I was actually a little kid. And right now PlayStation 5 is finally coming out so I'm super excited for this because this actually brings back a lot of memories because I used to play a lot of PlayStation at my friend's home because we used to play a lot of FIFA, a lot of racing games and we just used to connect our controllers and see who is the better player so finally PlayStation 5 is coming out so I'm gonna get it for myself and I'm gonna invite my friends over at my place and we'll actually see who's actually good at the game right now but I'm super excited to try out the new PlayStation 5 because obviously there's gonna be new controller better graphics and there's a lot of cool games coming up for 2020 and 2021 as well so I want to try and see what those games actually feels like even some of the old games so I want to see what exactly has changed and I'm super looking forward for this because you know Fortnite is still gonna be there so I want to see if I can crank some 90s on Fortnite and yeah, hopefully you guys are excited for PlayStation 5 just like I am and yeah, peace out. Hi there, my name is Claudio Prandoni, I'm from the website The Enemy from Brazil and one of my first PlayStation memories is exactly from the first PlayStation console and of course I'm talking about Final Fantasy 7. By the time that the game came out in the West I was around 11 years old and I got really impressed by the characters, the story, the amazing soundtrack and the world that Square managed to create thanks to the technology behind the first PlayStation. Recently we got to relieve some of that magic again with Final Fantasy VII Remake on the PS4 and well, here we are, ready to see the PlayStation 5 and the whole new generation of exciting games that I'm really looking forward to see and to play. Thanks! Hello fellas, my name is Shub. On YouTube I am also known as Beast Boy Shub. If I talk about my first console experience, ki, to PS4 was my first console tha, jo maine use kiya tha kuch do saal pehle. और इस पर जो फर्स्ट गेम मैंने खेली थी वो थी गॉड ऑफ वॉर ऑनेस्टली बताऊं तो पहली बार जब मैंने PS4 यूज किया था मुझे बहुत अजीब लगा था क्योंकि इसके कंट्रोलर में इतने सारे बटन्स हैं आई वाज टोटली कंफ्यूज्ड इन रोलर्स को हैंडल करना और इन बटन्स को समझना इतना मुश्किल था शुरुआत में मैं अपने मेन कैरेक्टर को संभाल भी नहीं पा रहा था वीडियो गेम में कुछ घंटों तक खेलने के बाद भी मैं यही सोच रहा था कि ये मशीन मेरे लिए बनी भी है या नहीं बट जैसे-जैसे मैं गेम्स खेलता गया मैंने रियलाइज करा कि PS4 पर गेम खेलना कितना इजी और रिलैक्सेशन से भरा है PS4 खरीदने की चॉइस मुझे मेरी वन ऑफ द बेस्ट चॉइस लगी बिकॉज़ मेरा पीसी इतना हाईटेक नहीं है वो इतनी हेवी गेम्स नहीं रन कर सकता था और PS4 के साथ मैंने इतनी अच्छी मेमोरीज बनाई हैं अब हमारे सामने आ रहा है PS5 एक नए डिजाइन के साथ कुछ नए फीचर्स के साथ मैं बहुत ज्यादा एक्साइटेड हूं PS5 एक्सक्लूसिव्स के लिए जो हमें आगे देखने को मिलेंगी 2020 की आने वाली भयंकर गेम्स लेटेस्ट कंसोल पे खेलने का मजा ही कुछ और होगा मैं बहुत एक्साइटेड हूं All right thanks guys uh, we are counting down less than 10 minutes until the PlayStation 5 event. Uh, very exciting uh, to see what Sony has in store for us. Uh, the live feed right now from them is literally just the four PlayStation symbols glowing in blue, and there's no countdown clock. Around. We, we did our own countdown clock since Sony didn't, but uh, we're excited to uh, see what uh, is in store for uh, the event at the top of the hour. So uh, again, uh, about nine minutes, and we'll run that live here and uh, get excited about hopefully the future of games. Uh, but right now we've got uh, another group of uh, friends from the YouTube family joining us to uh, share what they're looking forward to seeing. Uh, first up, we've got my friend uh, Danny O'Dwyer from Noclip. If you haven't watched his incredible documentaries about the gaming industry on YouTube, you should. Hello, Danny. Hey, what's up, man? You're too kind. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. It's, uh, it feels like this has been a long time coming. Not since the Sega Saturn have we waited this long to see what a console looks like before it comes out. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed we'll get some uh, details soon. We'll, hopefully we'll see today, and uh, maybe we won't. But, uh, yes, we'll, we'll all find out in about eight minutes uh, here. Uh, also joining us um, from Game Ranks, uh, Jake Baldino. Jake, uh, how you doing, man? 
Hey, Jeff, thanks for having me. There is a raging thunderstorm outside. I'm hoping that's like a, a good omen <laughs> here in oh. New York. Interesting. Okay. Well, everyone's, uh, yeah, should be inside anyways, right? Calling up the stream. True. There's, there's eight minutes left. Um, all right. And also uh, joining us is uh, Aaron from the Game Grumps. What's up, Ego Raptor? Hey, man. How's it going, buddy? How are we doing? Hey, man, I'm all right. You know, I'm, I'm glad I can be here and uh, make myself look bad by having my footage look like a VHS camcorder versus yours, which looks like the Tonight Show. So <laughs> it's, it's all right. Hey, it's like... It, you're just doing that retro vibe, right? The 8-bit vibe, right? That's, That's like, right, man. I'm trying to bring it back. Throwing it back to the Crash Bandicoot days. Um, all right. Well, uh, Danny, Jake, Aaron, we are, you know, seven minutes away. So you've heard what everyone else has said. Uh, you know, there's the Internet has had, it feels like, years to speculate on what Sony is about to reveal here. Uh, what What are you guys, What's what are you anticipating? Like, what would... What would excite you to open the show or like what, what I'm fascinated to see? Like, is it games? Is it the hardware? As you said, Danny, let's start with you. Like, what, what do you want to see today? I think like a lot of people, it's kind of time to see gameplay. Like we've had uh, tech demos. We've had uh, trailers being shown. Um, we're fairly close to the launch of this console. So it kind of feels like we we should really start to see like extended gameplay clips um obviously there's certain titles that people really want to see they want to see stuff return they want to you know they need a miyazaki hit somewhere be it elden ring or my bloodborne tattoo has been tingling all morning so i'm hopeful for something there uh but i also think a lot of the st stuff that hasn't been said already on the show is just the sort sort of services angle of this like are we going to see start seeing playstation games on pc at uh, what's their strategy for back backwards compatibility going to be um you know what's the upgrade sort of situation xbox of this pretty powerful uh, uh plan in place to allow people to basically buy the next gen version or get it for free so i think they have to answer a lot of those types of questions to really start getting people on their side all right so you got a big checklist uh yeah. <laughs> what about you jake what uh what, what what does sony need to do to uh to, to deliver for you today for for me i want to see a sequel to the order 1886 i know that's crazy <laughs> Uh, but I want to show up for my vampires and my werewolves. Uh, I think we need that. Uh, that would be fantastic. But I also just want to see uh, third party stuff. I know everybody's been talking about the exclusives, but I love when they sneak in some really exciting third party games. Uh, there are rumors, of course, some of them I'm taking with a grain of salt, but really uh, Konami properties showing up would be really exciting. That would be that would be something really, really I wouldn't cry, but I would get close. Uh, and then we also haven't heard anything from Star Wars for a while. So a nice little Star Wars surprise would be pretty sweet. Okay. Those are some interesting, interesting predictions for sure. Uh, lots of opportunities there. Uh, Aaron, for you, what's, uh, what's going to make the magic for you in the next hour? I'm a man who lives in the past. I want to see a sequel to Guitar Man for the PS2. I want to see some Chrono Trigger remake or uh, sequel. You know, I, I just want to, I want to see my favorites from way back in the day come back in, into a bright new tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, you know, honestly, it's a great point because there's so many classic franchises from the past that, like, even there was rumors at one point of like, oh, is like Legacy of Kane going to come back or like all these classic games and like, I love that stuff, right? I mean, it's like even, you know, you remember a couple of years ago, Shenmue, like the reaction it got at E3, right? And I think it's always a balance of like the new stuff, but also like the classic games that um, like, you know, it's been rumored for a long time, like Prince of Persia Sands of Time at some point would be like remade. And I love that game back in the day. And whether that's a PlayStation thing or, you know, whenever it's going to happen, I hope it does because there's like so many classic games that, you know, we lose because they're not always instantly playable and accessible, right? On PC, to some degree they are, but on all these consoles, like, uh, you know, Look, a lot of people playing games today weren't even born when some of these things were coming out. Um, so I think that's that's a great point to think of, like what you know what they could bring back from the past um, and and do stuff. And and Blue Point that uh, you know has done some awesome remasters. Uh, certainly, rumors that they're working with Sony on something. We don't know what it is, but um, yeah, hopefully some of that that will be revealed. Do do you guys, if they don't show the the console or the hardware? Is that is that a miss today? I mean, we saw the Xbox Series X at Game Awards. We've seen the controller. Like, are people going to are you going to be disappointed if you don't see the hardware today? I feel like uh, it's 
the console hardware reveals like the way they look have become less and less interesting in recent years like i think looking yeah. at the xbox series x it looks totally fine but it's 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 not it's not the Black type box. of thing that we're like writing home to your your mother about right uh so i yeah. I, I don't know i i kind of feel like this one might be a little bit out there like the uh, dual sense is kind of a crazy design it's it's the most i think sony stepped out of their comfort zone a little bit i think it's just it's one of these things like uh if they don't, it's like the Streisand effect almost. Like they just need to show it so people will, we can stop asking to show it at this stage. Um, how it looks, how that will factor to sales or anything, who knows? It's probably just marketing, but right. I think it'd be a shame if they didn't. Jake, uh, like, we've, yeah, okay. So fair enough. Aaron, is it like uh, you've seen the controller, which looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, man, the controller's pretty dope. Like, I don't know if it's gonna, if, it, if it's indicative of like what. The console's gonna look like if if I can get a console that's just an abomination, like a 32x <laughs> style, just like clicking in things from different and like 30 wires. I think I'll be pretty pleased because I've got plenty of sleek, black, beautiful bricks on my on my uh, my shelf, and I would really like something to stand out so I can be proud. Yeah, that's the one thing I do. Like when I saw the controller, I'm like, it felt futuristic. It'll be, you know, sometimes it's about like the console is almost disappearing, right? And like Xbox is sort of like it can disappear in in your con in your system, but that feels like at least based on the controller, I'm like, ah, it could be really interesting what what PS5 looks like. Um, we need to bring back wood said, like, finish. We'll see. Like what happened to wood finish, man? That was yeah. like that was the <laughs> jam. And if we're talking and about handle. like the modern day thing now, where you got, you know. Yeah, bring back the hit the travel with the the console. I used to bring my GameCube around all the time, just carrying around that handle. Man, that was th that well, was Mark Scurdy unveils yeah. the handle. That'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is possible. No, and that's like you know, how much can you customize it, right? And like, is there just one? And you know, a lot of people have asked about the controllers. Like, is they all that color? Are you gonna be able to get a black one? Um, that's the stuff that I doubt we'll hear about today. But I don't know. Like, it's it, it's actually kind of exciting for me. Uh, to watch something like this this way, it's very odd because you know a lot of us are normally like in a big room with thousands of people, and there's the 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 electric buzz of like why is there a curtain on the stage and what are they you know is that an orchestra pit or are they going to use that? And here we really have like the sky's the limit about how this is going to start and how it's going to be presented. So it's kind of cool that you know everyone's being forced to innovate in a different way. Like we're all gathering you know virtually here. To do this, uh, Sony, I think, has obviously had to pivot. For I can't imagine this was their original plan um, of how they were going to do everything this year. So um, it'll be interesting to see. And I think you know a lot of these game teams have been working so hard from home to even prepare their trailers and their games. And I think sometimes we we lose perspective of how hard it's probably been to pull this stuff together and finish these games and get them ready. Um, so. 30 seconds left to go, guys. Thanks for joining us. We're going to see all of you afterwards because we're going to react to it. So we'll all watch it live here. Um, and we've got about uh, 20 seconds until the stream is going to start. Uh, PlayStation right now says stay tuned. So we think things are going to begin. Um, and we'll obviously run it for you guys live. So Danny, Aaron, Jake, thanks for joining us. We will see you guys uh, on the backside here as we react to um, all things that Sony has announced for us. Um, inside of this event. And as I said, we really don't know what to expect. Um, you know, we think they're going to be a bunch of games uh, from hopefully both first party and third party studios, but how those are presented, how much gameplay we see, how many trailers we see, what is the story that Sony wants to tell us about the next generation of games? Uh, you know, the subtitle is The Future of Gaming, which is obviously a very, uh, you know, bold statement um and hopefully sony is going to deliver against that statement with a vision of where games are going to go and how we're going to play them in you know new or different ways um in the next generation um mark Cerny has certainly said he believe you know sony believes in console generations and sony has said you know a lot of the games are going to show i think are only probably going to work on playstation 5 whereas xbox has said you know a lot of their series x games will work on the current xbox um so you don't have to upgrade to play the games Jim Ryan, the head of PlayStation, has said we do believe in those generations and giving people things that are only on PlayStation 5. So that's obviously setting a very high bar for you know what they're going to deliver to say that this is only possible on PS5. So uh, we will we will all watch together, I guess, and uh, and see the event. Um, we are obviously uh, watching the the feed here live, and as soon as we go live um, with the event, um, we're going to be able to present it to all of you guys live right here on YouTube. Now we, now we uh, know it's E3, E3 Jeff, right now, and it's, it's saying, late. Uh, stay tuned. So uh, we will all stay tuned as uh, yes. as we wait here.
Hopefully the thunderstorm in New York isn't impacting anything, Jay. <laughs> wait. Oh, wait, hang on. I need to feel included. Okay, now I'm <laughs> oh, there, you oh, there you go. Okay, now I'm ready to wait, go. Waiting for the whole hour to do that, which is great. All right, here we go. <laughs> the event's about to begin. Uh, enjoy it live right here on YouTube. Choices, how we might have ended up. No, I like to hand with them though. for something great. Why did I move here? I guess it was the weather. Or the, ah, I don't know, that thing. That magic. I thought we was trying to get out of this bullshit. Sounding more and more like a snee eye itch every day. My job, my sport, get your own. We should talk about work. We out here gang banging like it's 91. We all love thanks. A DJ! Give me a hand with these bodies! This cannot be traced back to me. Champagne, anyone? Just sort of smash things.
It was great to kick today off with a look back at just some of the seminal moments of the last 25 years. And what better way to bridge our past and our future than with a game that's graced every PlayStation console, Grand Theft Auto. It's been a privilege partnering with Rockstar Games for many years now. And we're thrilled to open today with the news that that partnership will continue with PlayStation 5. It's now just over a year since we began sharing technical details of PlayStation 5. But today's the day that we've been looking forward to for years, when we get to show you just some of the games that demonstrate our belief that PlayStation 5 mocks the biggest generational transition our industry has yet seen. The content we've curated for today's event showcases how PS5 has inspired developers to create new experiences that are transformative in how they look, sound, and feel. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. Hero's just someone who doesn't give up. Your dad said that. He was right. Now it's your turn. Go be a hero, Miles. Okay. Let's do this. Feeling just don't stop me now. えー、と今日は皆さんに僕らが作っている新しいグランツーリスモの情報をシェアできるということですごく興奮しています。今回のグランツーリスモはおそらくこれまでのねグランツーリスモのファンの方がプレイしたら本当に嬉しいんじゃないかなっていう、まあ、キャンペーンモードを中心にしたグランツーリスモになっていると思います。ぜひ楽しみにしていてください。
You all right back there? No way. It appears that the dimensions are collapsing on one another. If we cannot get to... Get to... Right. The ship. I mean, we can't be that far. I have it in my sight. They have found us, Ratchet. <laughs> 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 How do I scare this thing? Ask nicely. Slow down, please. That's not listening. <laughs> the dimensions are weakening considerably. <laughs> How bad is it? <laughs> Well, it is certainly not good. Great! Where are we? It's me. We've been boarded! Get off me, ship! Oh, Ratchet, we are too late. Ratchet? Who? Hi, I'm Marcus Smith, creative director at Insomniac Games. The entire studio is so excited to be able to share with you a first ever look at Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart brand new, full-length, interdimensional adventure built from the ground up for the PlayStation 5. We're doing things we've never been able to do before, like use dimensional rifts to be able to leap from planet to planet nearly instantly, or put ray trace reflections on Clank. All of our alien worlds are filled with density and life previously unseen. Plus, Ratchet's all-new arsenal is more exciting than ever thanks to the DualSense controller's enhanced feedback. Ratchet and Clank are near and dear to our hearts at Insomniac, and we can't wait to share more with you in the future. But for now, here's another look. Did you see that? It's like my ride, bro! Off the long back! Sand shots from above. My sand shark! My sand shark! My heroes! Was that a kraken, or at least a very large octopus? <laughs> I will never get used to that. Hey, break reality. Did Dr. Nefarious really resurface after all these years just to try and take over the universe again? Yeah! I kind of wish he was doing a worse job! He must have more plans than he That's what I'm afraid of.
Making games used to be about these constant trade-offs between the artistic vision and technical limitations. With PS5, we're not going to be burdened like that. We're going to be able to realize our artistic vision a lot better. It's got a ton of horsepower, which is very easy to unlock, and it's a, a machine that's really easy to develop on. The PS5 will present a paradigm shift as to what players will come to expect from gaming. It will let us tell stories, make worlds, create gameplay that I think will truly captivate the player and really surprise quite a few people. 
please take a look at this new franchise for Worldwide Studios coming exclusively for PlayStation 5. Over and over, I relive my first moments on this alien planet. The crash. The attack. My death. The crash. The attack. My death. Trapped in this endless cycle. Even death is no escape. Each time I awake, this planet seems somehow different. As if changing. This world is becoming part of me. Infecting my mind. My memories. The longer I spend here, the more I can feel my sanity slip away. But I cannot lose hope. My only choice is to keep fighting. To keep looking for answers. My only hope is to break the cycle. Before the cycle breaks me.
Hello everyone, my name is Josh Greer and this is my brother Mike. We're from Ember Lab, a small team with a background in film and animation. And we're very excited today to share with you the first look at our new game. It's a story full of adventure and charm that has themes in personal growth and redemption. So please enjoy. sense the power that flows through this land, yet you do not fully understand it. <laughs> Driven by the belief that you can help these troubled spirits. <laughs> You cannot hide your weakness from me. You have no power here, Kena. Do you ever feel like you're just waiting for a sign? To do that thing you've always meant to do. Sometimes I feel like I'm just standing on the edge of doing great things. But something's holding me back. Maybe it's just nerves. Maybe it's the fear that I'll never be as good as what I imagine when I'm still just standing on the edge. 
but if we've got nothing else to lose, might as well jump. Hi, I'm Lauren Lanning, and I'm here to share with you a game that I've been dying to make. It's an emotionally engaging story where rescuing is rewarding, failure is devastatingly hilarious, and the memories should last you a lifetime. Take a look. You are no longer a slave, Abe. They believed, trusted, followed, and it led them here. You may have escaped the murderous blades, but the fate of your entire people is up to you. プレイステーション5によって我々の考える東京のビジュアルを実現できました。今までに見たことのない東京の魅力を見て、聞いて、感じることができます。これからお見せするのはゴーストワイヤー東京の世界初のゲームプレイ動画です。スーパーナチュラルでミステリアスな東京、そこに潜む脅威と美しさを感じ取っていただけると思います。ぜひお楽しみください。You see things others can't. Your threats, others don't. <laughs> Fight when others won't. To you to save Tokyo.
don't stretch no limousine. If you talk talking one that's gotta intervene, I'm the biggest one that don't you ever seen. I'ma need a crown. I'm the only one that ever held it down. That's the tip top people flip flop every day. Not I top five. I'm a big shot. I'm the one that wanna take the big shots. Big balls, big rings, big rocks, big bag, big wolves, big car, big man, big plan, get lost in this wall. Look at me now. Tell me down. So give me the give me the crown. Make it wait for the day. We're not the same, we're not the same, we're not the same, we run everything. We're not the same, we're not the same, they got us running through these things. Make way for the king. It was always gonna end like this. All your hard work, all your sacrifice, only sped up the process. yourself alone. Hakan Abrak here from Ion Tractive. In Hitman 3, Agent 47 is back for his most intimate and professional contract in his entire career. This is also the dramatic conclusion for the World of Assassination trilogy. I'm so proud to be here to present a little glimpse of the gameplay where Agent 47 is on top of the world in Dubai. Enjoy.
What's up everyone? I'm Zion Williams to the New Orleans Pelicans. Here we go. The first ever teaser for NBA 2K21. Y'all are not ready for this. Trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. I'm the first one in and the last one out. Whoever owns the place gotta drag me out. Ah. Amazing, aren't they? Half bug, half snack. A very recently discovered species, entirely unique to this island. Oh, this one's lively. Beautiful seed patterns. Oh, and it's tasty too. Welcome to the island of bug snacks. My invitation is open. Come join me on the island of Bugsnacks. <sighs> Liz! Liz, I, um, I was trying to carry a lamp with my weenie hands, but I dropped it, and uh, now the town's on fire. Oh, again? It's Bugsnacks. Hi everyone, thank you for being with us today for this very special event. But before we get to the end of the show, I have something very near and dear to me.
Dessen is a next-gen first-person shooter about rival assassins locked in a time loop. This is our unique vision, what Arkane is all about. Freeform immersive gameplay, a surreal player-driven story smashed together. Want to see some stylish action? Check this out. making this easy. Morning, Black Reef. Another day, another death. Our time loops fun. For everyone else on this island, this place is paradise. A never ending party where hunting me is the main attraction. And no matter how I try to escape, they always cut me down. But I'm one stubborn motherfucker. Every loop I'm learning a little more, piecing together the puzzle. There's eight targets, and they all gotta die before midnight. There's just one little snag. You thought it was going to be easy? Juliana Blake, Black Reef's protector and a real pain in my ass. She may kill me a million times, but eventually, inevitably, I will break this fucking loop. I like watching you die. I like killing you. There's a difference. Long ago, a young girl went with her mother to pick berries for her father, who was hard at work. But the forest greeted them with a dark, cold silence. The bushes empty. Yet determined to find the berries, the rascal broke free of mother's grasp and vanished into the trees. Mother's worried cries faded fast as the girl ran on, over vine, under branch, and into the forest deep. What is it with that creepy story? It's just a local tale. You're really into that stuff? Quit being so paranoid. No, no! 
Friendly! Friendly! Who are you? Who sent you? What's going on? They're coming. Who is? Sorry, Ethan. Why? Freedom. Our freedom.
The old ones. Perished a thousand years ago. Their great cities. Turned to graves. In their place. Came new life. On behalf of the entire team at Guerrilla, we're happy to share the first look at Horizon Forbidden West. We're continuing Elga's story as she moves west to a far future America. To brave a beautiful but dangerous frontier masked with mysterious new threats. Get ready to explore distant lands ravaged by massive storms. And take on new powerful machines as you return to the majestic world of Horizon. Stay tuned for much more. We can't wait for you to get your hands on it. I think there's a lot to look forward to for the community. I think fans are going to be really pleased. As a game designer and storyteller, this is incredibly exciting. We're talking a whole new generation of ideas and experiences that we can create for the player. No matter where they are, no matter who they are. New experiences like we've never had before. More iconic, interesting characters. More atmospheric, immersive worlds for players to explore. We want to wow players. Expect the unexpected. And I, for one, can't wait. We can't wait. We can't wait to share them with you. It's so exciting. Incredibly exciting. It's really about for the players and for the players. As a developer, it's an amazing feeling. Welcome to PlayStation 5.
hope you've enjoyed the first glimpse of our future today. You've seen our most striking console design yet, and you've seen games that can only be enjoyed with the full range of PlayStation 5's features and power. At PlayStation, we believe in generational transitions, and we put years of work into making them happen. We want you to enjoy the unique benefits of moving from one generation to the next. Thank you for joining us. We're launching later this year, and we have tons more to share. Welcome to PlayStation 5. There it is. Play has no limits. I guess that's the new tagline for PlayStation. Uh, wow, what a, a pretty incredible event. Uh, the reveal of the PlayStation 5 hardware at the end there looks pretty interesting and cool. Like, I want to see it in person, uh, but a pretty incredible showcase of both big games from huge studios and also uh, smaller studios inside of that presentation. There is a lot to unpack. And welcome to the post show. Um, we're going to be recapping a lot of that news. We'll have a special guest joining us. A uh, bunch of the developers uh, you just saw there will be joining us to talk about some of the games that uh, we got to see in that presentation. And of course, some top um, uh, you know, YouTube creators from around the world will join us to talk about it as well. But pretty amazing. Uh, my reaction is one of uh, excitement um, for a lot of the games that we got to see, uh, You know, starting with Miles from uh, Insomniac, uh, which is really good. Ratchet and Clank, I got to say, I was just blown away by that new Ratchet game. I think that was one of my favorite games in that presentation, which looked great. And then, of course, New Horizon from Gorilla. Um, so big first party titles, but then a ton of amazing things. I mean, you know, Demon Souls, uh, you know, new stuff from Capcom, uh, a lot of exciting newer titles, too, right? The Octodad guy is doing something new. Um, I, there's so much to talk about. I don't even know where to begin, but I think the hardware is one of the most exciting things uh, that we got to see. And as you were here for the pre-show, everyone was kind of speculating, what was it going to look like on the hardware side? Were they going to show it? Well, they did. Um, anyways, well, let's get right to uh, reactions here, and we can all talk about this with uh, some other folks. Uh, joining me again, we've got uh, Danny, Jake, and Aaron. Uh, guys, uh, welcome back. Have you... Uh, have you recovered? What did, what did you think? Let's go around and get reactions. Danny, let's start with you. Yeah, I think it would have been very different if we didn't get uh, Horizon Forbidden West on the console at the end. Uh, it was really cool to just see it, to uh, see all the peripherals they're going to have with it. Um, it's a really crazy looking uh, uh, console. I can't wait to hear what Aaron has to say about it. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, I think, I think they rendered it out. There was a, it was, 
the sort of modern thing of like Sony spending a good bit of time showing indie stuff in the middle, you kind of couldn't tell what the full fat of the presentation was going to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've shown us there's two specs for the console. Like, there's a lot to talk about here. Yes, that's right. There's the digital edition and then the main one, which I guess doesn't have the uh, the drive in it. So they've done an all digital version. Uh, pretty cool. Lots to unpack. Jake, what was your uh, what was your honest reaction to what you saw? I was surprised about the amount of indies. Uh, it is really cool. Sm smaller titles. It seems like now the line is starting to blur where if you didn't know who was making it, you would just think it was this like massive studio developing it, which is really exciting. Also, uh, Rhett, for me, the game of the show was Resident Evil Village. Uh, it just looks perfect. Uh, I like seeing Chris Redfield there looking like actually Chris Redfield. Uh, <laughs> overall, just I think it was a pretty good show. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of a lot of stuff. As you said, we haven't even got into some of the games and, and all the details on that stuff. Uh, Aaron, you were uh, you were watching diligently. What's what's the gut reaction from Game Grumps camp? Look, I, I, I laughed, I cried, I had a, a, a religious experience as I was watching these these trailers. Um, you know, I gotta say I was a little disappointed that they kept teasing a new Blinks game and there was no Blinks announced, so I think it's probably coming soon in the future. Um, you know, and if you don't want me to get all hyped up about Blinks, stop putting orange cats in your trailers. Uh, that's just a personal uh, criticism. Um, but yeah, a lot of cool stuff. I mean, Demon Souls remake looks amazing. Uh, Little Devil Inside, I thought looked really, really charming, um, and I'm super stoked for that. I mean, I literally wrote down like all of the all of the the stuff. I don't know if you can read any of that, but it was just like I was like, man, I'm running out of pages here. There's there was so much in this freaking trailer. No, I said there was like so many games, and that's the thing is like you you know the hardware by itself is a big reveal, and then you stack all those games in front of it. Danny, were there any stand? I mean, there was a lot of stuff. Um, I actually just tweeted, like, uh, you know, even some third party stuff in there. And some people were saying, oh, these games are shipping on all platforms. And I, from what I've heard, like, Bethesda actually has done a deal of some sort where, like, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo are going to be, like, console exclusive to PlayStation for a period of time, it sounds like, and things like that that weren't even evident in the presentation. And I'm still trying to unpack all that. Um, but from what I've heard, a lot of those games. Uh, you know, even some third party titles, not all of them, but some of them obviously have, you know, special kind of relationships with uh, with PlayStation. So was there any, what stood out to you kind of game wise across the gamut of everything, Danny? Yeah, well, I guess we just finished our documentary on the history of Arcane and spent yeah. a bunch of time there. Uh, so I, it was interesting to see Deathloop on it because obviously Bethesda historically have had their own E3 event. Um, and uh, it was that was probably the biggest third party game, I feel like. And just a great showing. You know, we didn't. We sort of have an idea of what types of games they make at Arcane, and there was definitely elements of uh, Dishonored in it, with the character basically using the Blink uh, power, and um, elements of uh, Prey's fantastic DLC Moon Crash, or sort of side game Moon Crash, um, with the with the persistent sort of roguelike element to it, and just the style of it. Like that trailer, they completely nailed it, and uh, it's fun to see a new IP out of Bethesda. You know, we don't get them all that often, and. There's just something about that game. I think it's kind of the planets aligning for Bethesda. They have a lot of games that are quite popular with a certain type of player. And to me, this yeah. feels like one that might actually break out into a bigger audience, an even bigger audience. Yeah. So the first party group, you know, has done some incredible games over the years. Seems like, you know, we got a bunch of stuff. Even like uh, there's a cool thing with Astrobot, which uh, mm -hmm. sounds like that's going to be when I was texting with some folks, and it sounds like that's going to be something that will come with the console, I think, is like a thing that will let you kind of like play with the bots and like explore the controller. And from everyone I've talked to, and I think some of the developers that are coming on will talk about this, the controller and the haptics and the whole feel of it and everything is something that the video can't capture. And apparently it's like really unique playing games on this system, um, which is hard to, you know, you, they did a lot of showing, they didn't do a lot of telling. And I think that's the thing is like people are going to discover that um, themselves as they... Uh, they go through it, but first party wise, we saw you know open with you know something new from Insomniac in the Spider Verse, and then end with Horizon. Um, those were pretty powerful games. Is there anything that you guys were hoping to see that you didn't get? Got this, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where I saw Square Enix, and I was like, "Here it comes, baby!" And then there was there was some dog, and I was like, "I guess it, there might have been a dog in Chrono Trigger." Was there a dog in Chrono Trigger? And I was like, I was, I was really stretching. I was like, okay, well, maybe I admit, I forgot there was a dog in Chrono Trigger. And then it just wasn't Chrono Trigger. So I was like, all right, well, this looks cool. 
There was um, the, uh, yeah. we didn't see anything from, I thought maybe I was holding out for something from Vend, like maybe that Siphon filter uh, comeback that people were looking forward to. Uh, or, or I mentioned at the start Elden Ring or something, but we did get a little bit of Miyazaki anyway with the, uh, with the Demon's Souls remake, which I guess Blue Point are working on, who did this Shadow of the yep. Colossus one, which was really good. Yeah, no, uh, exactly. Blue Point does incredible work, and that's pretty exciting to see that. Looks incredible. Um, the tough thing with some of this is like you see the trailers, but you want to know like exact details, right? On like what they're doing, how that's all put together and everything. So um yeah, I'm really I'm excited to uh to learn more about all the games across the board. What did you guys think of the console design? I mean, we've seen the controller. I mean, what I what I sort of love about it is it feels like it kind of stands on its own, right? It's almost like it feels like it's something you would see in like you know, Dubai or something where it's like it just it has like a towering presence to it. Um, but I'm curious, what did you guys think of the, the console design? I'm super I'm, into hardware looking very much like a spaceship from the future. You know, I like spending however much money this thing is going to cost and make it feel like I'm looking at it. And I'm like, yeah, look at that crazy thing. I just spent a lot of money on all that plastic. Uh, and this is like a giant alienware white LED gamer thing. And I'm kind of all about it. Um, yeah, uh, that's one of those ones that I think, like, I, I'd be interested to see how it plays and if you can put it the other way or whatever. I mean, Danny, what was your take on the overall look of it? Like, we've had this trend over the past few generations uh, of, of consoles, like you said, sort of fading into the background, right? It's just being, like, minimal and part of the TV setup. This is the wildest looking console I've seen, like, in a while. Like, it didn't have the handle, but it's it, it feels like perhaps... Like a lot of consoles don't date as sort of badly or as well as they used to. And this one feels like it's very much of an era. So uh, I'm fascinated to see what people think. I'm also fascinated to see to sort of know what we think of it 10 years from now, because it's a pretty wild design, way wilder than I was expecting. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, it's definitely like it's out there, right? And it's one of those ones that I can't wait. Unfortunately, I don't have it here to pull up and show it everyone, which I <laughs> even the controller, I just want to hold, right? I mean, it's this object of desire, right? E3, we're usually used to like going to a booth and seeing it. I don't know when we're even going to get to mm. see this thing. Um, Aaron, what was your take on like that end and like the look of the console, the controller, like that whole package? Was it like an object of, of aspiration for you? Oh, I'm so pleased that it is just like, and this is going to sound like a criticism, and it's not. I'm so pleased it is a total abomination. Um, <laughs> it, it's just so strange and wacky, and I really love the the, the horny sl sweeping shots of like the inside, where it's like, get a look at all the angles, baby. And it's like, oh my god, it, come on, jeez. But I can't wait for it to be on my shelf and just to be like, look at this thing, man. This is ridiculous. And I hope... I hope that we get like a pink one or something because I'm all about that. Like whenever they make like the different colored versions, I'm like, <laughs> give me, give me the weird ones. Give me the, give me the oh. light blue. Give me the. I'm sure there, uh, uh, there potentially will be other versions. I mean, the thing that, you know, everyone wants to know is price and cost of all this stuff, right? So they sold the dream, but is there, is there a price now if they come out and say it's $599? Does that freak everyone out? Or what do you guys think about like what they're going to charge for it? I think it has to be up in that range, right? At least for the 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 one with the disc, like those four K a four K blue player Blu ray player now is going to set you at least a hundred quid. So I feel like they have their out, like I, they'll have their cheaper version of it, um, and then you know five nine nine to be honest, like five nine nine feels probably right for it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know it, it, if it gets higher than that. I think we start getting into like weird un unknown territory, but. Um, for me, I think that feels about right, and they'll have like a maybe a hundred dollars cheaper on the on the other SKU or something like that. Yeah, that's I right. Think it He's right. You take the drive expensive. out, maybe it is up cheaper. Mm. What do you think, Jake? It's like four ninety nine. Uh, I maybe, and I think kind of what Danny was saying, like the fact that they're introducing two SKUs might show that they're aware that it's going to be expensive, and it might scare people a little bit. So better to give yep. people at least two options to kind of soften that blow, you know. It's a good point. You're right. That's the thing. And there's obviously rumors that Xbox might have two versions as well, but they've only talked about one. And so, yeah, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, like this, what I did like is that they sort of sold the dream, right? And like, here are games, here's a beautiful, you know, object of desire. It feels like an art piece, right? I mean, it really looks like something that you would want to own and covet. And now, you know, see when they rip off the band aid. Um, was there anything in, in the presentation that you like you guys were underwhelmed with or surprised with? Like, I was hoping that. Horizon was going to look great, right? And we, I think there were enough rumors that like probably something was happening there. The Ratchet and Clank game, I thought, was like 
amazing. And that's something that like, I think this world needs like kind of bright, fun games out there. And like the, it felt like a Pixar, I mean, the Ratchet games have always looked amazing, but this one, just like the gameplay looked like absolutely incredible. And I was, I was really, really excited when I saw that. Yeah, at one stage it looked like one of the trailers they would have had for some of the other games. I mean, these games and kind of like racing games have always been front and center with these consoles. Uh, they're they're fantastic showpieces. I think what was really interesting about this was not just how how good it looked, but the the the. I guess it was the first time we saw the demonstration of the ability of that SSD to really load stuff fast because they were jumping yeah. from entirely different tile sets, you know, every five seconds at one stage. Um, so that was a, an impressive part of from a technical perspective, anyway. Yep. No, uh, you said that's the thing is like, how does this SSD and the technology really kind of change the game experience? And I think we saw a lot of stuff. There wasn't a lot of talking, so I think part of what we'll get hopefully from some developers now is like a better sense of like how the haptics work on the controller. How does the SSD, as you said, allow, you know, bigger levels and, you know, more content being streamed into the level in real time. Um, but overall, I thought it was good. So let's get some grades from you guys. Uh, go back to grade school here, A, B, C, D, F. Uh, how would you grade the, uh, the PlayStation presentation today? Man, wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's putting the pressure on. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, I, I'd I, say I B guess. plus, maybe. It felt okay. it felt like it it was perfunctory in a way. It sort of did what it required to do, and there were games that were excited about a lot of which we were expecting. Um, yep. they didn't put a foot wrong, which I think in many ways is perhaps most important. <laughs> yeah, one thing that someone said online I think is fair is understanding kind of like what's coming for launch. When are things coming out? Right, and I mean there was a lot of twenty twenty ones in there, and it's like I think it I think the Miles saying it sounded like that was, I think it's, I think it said holiday 2020. I mean, there's some stuff and like Hitman was January 21. So there's some stuff there, but I'd be curious like for day one, what's actually going to be out. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Ratchet even had a date on it. I can't remember. Maybe that'll come out. But I think that's one thing people are wondering. It's like, well, hey, what's coming when? But it felt like stuff was at least near term. I didn't see a lot of stuff there that felt like it was like three or four years off. Right. And that's sometimes what happens at these console reveals is you see like the next five years. Um, and it felt like Sony was a little more focused on here's stuff coming in, you know, the next year or two. Um, all right, so B plus from Danny. Jake? I would also say a B, uh, definitely because I could have used maybe one more, like, blow down the doors, like, oh, my God, scream in the room type game, uh, but also because I, I wanted more demonstrations like Ratchet and Clank, uh, showing this new hardware at work, doing this crazy stuff where the worlds are loading, really see what developers can do harnessing this stuff. So I yeah. could have used a little bit more, like, face value examples of that but otherwise pretty good a b yeah yeah it was and you know some people had said leading in like how much gameplay was going to be shown right and we saw like a lot of trades we saw we certainly saw gameplay within the presentation but right we didn't see the 10 minute playthrough of a level or something right which sometimes at e3 someone will pick up a controller and you're right like even even the first party games like there were trailers versus like let's you know show you you know a 10 minute demo of horizon or something so that's something that you know in I think it's a fair point of like how much, you know, you really want to see those demos, but it's also, I think the start of the story and these things get announced and then hopefully, you know, I'm sure we will see, you know, demos and content of those moving forward. So that's a good point. So a B from Jake, a B plus from Danny, Aaron, what do you think? Dude, you know, I, I would say like A plus because we got some sick, like we got we got Bug Snacks, which had Caro Caro Bonita doing the theme song, which was super nice and looked adorable. He's coming on in a minute. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> oh, awesome. oh, sweet. Uh, I, Little Devil Inside looks so cool. I'm super excited for that. I hadn't you know, seen that game, a... and I usually have like a pretty good read on stuff, and I, I guess I was looking up, it's like a Kickstarter or a team out of South Korea, but like it was announced and then no one had seen it because it was like, or I hadn't seen it, and I saw that. It was like new for me in the show, so I was, I thought that was really cool, a little level inside. Yeah. So dang charming. And we got yeah. a lot of furry representation, which I am super <laughs> excited for. We got some sick furry games. Um, but I will say, though, I did say I would give it an A+, plus, but there was a lot of Blinks. I'm, I, I know I'm harping on this, but they were getting me really excited sweeper? for Blinks the Time Sweeper, and there was no <laughs> Blinks, so that gets, that, that really gets rid of the plus sign. And then, He's an uh, Xbox character. You think that he'd have to come over, wouldn't he? Dude, I mean, why not, right? Like, it's this is the time for Blinks. We got all these time loop games. It's the perfect. It's the perfect. Anyway, He's right. Sweeper. And maybe Ratchet should be a time sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, there you go. There was and a then, cat uh, in that, I think. That other. Yeah. The yeah. Other um, yeah. That's that's a really cool game. Yeah, out of France. Um, yeah, with the cat. That's uh, yeah, Stray, which is like really really cool. 
looks like looks good. And, uh, you know, I'll check it out to try to get those Blinks vibes. Um, but there was again no Chrono Trigger and no Guitar Man, so I'm gonna go B. I'm gonna go B. Oh wait, wait I thought you said A plus. No, I was it, almost A plus, but the lack of Blinks, the lack of Chrono Trigger, and the lack of Guitar Man. I don't know, man. I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling a little empty handed. So we got here. a B plus and two Bs, I guess. Yeah. No, it was again. I will say, given the level of expectation. Um, I think they did a pretty good job because you go into these things. I know this with Game Awards. You go into them with a lot of trepidation because, you know, everyone's like, where's GTA 6 and where's, you know, X and Y. And uh, it's one of those things where, like, it was a pretty good lineup of stuff um, across the board for those of us that love games. And I'm sure there will be uh, more news to share in the months ahead. But I thought, you know, in especially under these circumstances with the pandemic and everything going on, that that was able to come together that way. Um, looked great, and you know, Xbox will do something in July, and we'll have more stuff coming in August at Gamescom. And I think it's going to be exciting to see kind of the the ramp up and cadence. But uh, pretty pretty cool um, event overall, I thought um, for what gamers wanted to see. So, guys, thanks for uh, for hanging with us and watching Pleasure. live here on YouTube. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. if only we could pull up our PlayStation Five controllers right now. That's the only one I've got on my desk, and it kind of oh, looks like Danny. it. <laughs> They got the controllers now. They got the Friday. triggers. <laughs> Product placement. All right. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Danny O'Dwyer, Nick Valdino, Aaron Hansen. Uh, great to have you guys with us. We'll see you. Uh, maybe we'll see you next month. We're going to do this again for the, the Xbox event in July. So oh, right uh, Yes, that's we'll, when we'll, Blinks will happen. Okay, yes, invite me back on that one. They, ha they have a month to get that trailer going. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Phil Spencer know. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining us yeah. uh, for our live show. Uh, and... Now we've got um, some special guests coming by. Some of the games we've been furiously con... I probably saw me. I was texting and talking to people because we've been furiously booking uh, developers to come by here and tell us about some of the games. Um, so what we're going to do for probably about the next hour is talk to a number of the teams that uh, you guys got to see um, in that presentation. Come by and tell us a bit about their games and about what it's like working on uh, PlayStation 5. So this is all coming together kind of in uh, real time here. But uh, I think... For the first guest, we are going to head all the way, uh, it looks like, over to Copenhagen, I think, right? Um, with the team, uh, with Travis and the team from Hitman 3. Um, it's late over there, so we thought we'd bring these guys in first to talk about their big announcement. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, Jeff. Hello. Hey, everyone. We're doing really well here. Yes. Well, congratulations on the announcement. We saw uh, Hitman 3 in the presentation coming January 2021, so we're not going to have to wait long. Um, but first of all, thanks for joining us uh, so uh, so late at night over there. But uh, I'll just kind of turn it over to you guys to tell us a bit about this game. We got to see, obviously, the trailer and then a little hint of the, um, the gameplay. But yeah, tell us about 47 and kind of what we can expect um, expect from this game from you guys. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us. Um, so Hitman 3 is the dramatic conclusion to the World of Assassination trilogy. We will, of course, take players around the globe on a fantastic adventure to rich, lovingly handcrafted, sprawling, immersive, living, breathing sandbox locations. Yeah, absolutely. This time around, 47 is really going in on being a ruthless professional. Uh, and what we're saying about it this time is that he's on the most important contracts of his uh, of his entire career. Um, you've got to look there at the trailer. We saw it, of course, on the show as well. Um, and really, the team have done an awesome job delivering not just the, the cinematic trailer, but also a little look at the gameplay as well. Um, the announced trailer is really the one where we show the tone of the game. Um, Hitman 3 is a much darker game than the previous two in the trilogy. You know, with, with Hitman 1, that was about four years ago now, that was very professional. It was sort of 47 at the peak of his game. And then with Hitman 2, we looked at things being a little bit more playful. That's where we had, we brought the briefcase back and a lot of features that people love from their previous games. Hitman 3 really sort of cranks it up a notch where this is sort of, um, it's much more dark, it's much more mature, it's much more serious. Um, it's, as far as said, it's the last game in the trilogy, so... This is where sort of the storyline for these three games comes to a real conclusion. Wow. Well, it's, it's uh, it looks amazing. Tell us a bit about, you know, PlayStation 5, since you're in the presentation. Like, do you guys, do you know the console is going to look like that? Or is that a surprise for you too? It's beautiful. It's such a beautiful package. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it looks amazing. So 
Yeah, it was yeah, really, really cool. and so tell me a bit about. We've heard from a lot of developers about the controller and the haptics and all that. Can you maybe talk about like you know the SSD, the controller, like what excites you as developers about you know Hitman and what you're going to be able to do on on the next gen with this game that you haven't been able to do before. Well, Hitman is incredibly complex. It is so systems rich, and our team is amazing at pushing all of the systems. So it's fantastic to have this powerful technology where we can continue to push all of our systems without having right. to pull back. Yep. So is it something where you know the 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 levels and the SSD, like we're going to have larger levels in this, or can we talk a bit about sort of the gameplay experience and what will make it sort of truly feel next gen um, when we play it next year? I think one of the really cool things that we saw in the Dubai trailer was that, you know, we've got this huge skyscraper that you can go to and we're actually up in the clouds where it's also uh, from the trailer, you can see that though, it's really, really exotically built with all this, with lots of glass uh, where you can fully see a lot of times outside um, and you can actually traverse outside of the building as well, uh, yeah. where you've got all the sort of audio effects of the, the wind and 47 suit moving as you was expected to do. Um, and it really allows us um, to sort of, as far as said, push things further and sort of really sort of not be as restricted in the yeah. sort of imagination that we have of thinking if we want to make a Hitman level with all of these things, what can that look like? And of course, the power of next gen allows us to sort of really push those boundaries, push those limits and make a game that's as complex as Hitman even better. Yeah, no, um, it's exciting to see where you guys are going to be able to take this as a team, you know, let's talk a bit about, you know, building this game this year under these conditions with the pandemic and everything, getting your trailer ready and announcement. How has it been like developing the game this year? It's been extraordinary. I mean, we, we have two studios in Copenhagen and Malmo, and we had been producing the game out of both studios. So before we all went working from home in mid-March, we had already been practicing, um, you know, how to collaborate uh, from different locations, and we had already yeah. evolved our, our uh, communication practices. So we were extraordinarily lucky. We were working from home for about two months, and for the last month or so, we've been uh, slowly coming back to the studio in stages. The team is incredibly resilient and so strong, and I feel that it's just been a real gift for me personally to see the team come together while working apart. It's it's been really extraordinary. Yeah, and and you guys called the ball with like a January release date next year because we saw lots of games with years, but you're it feels like it's coming soon. So you're pretty pretty far into development right now. We are deep deep in it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, that's Fine. exciting. Well, I can't wait to see uh, you know more on this game. I love that you gave us a glimpse of the gameplay, and also you guys always do incredible trailers. Um, for Hitman stuff. So uh, yeah, we're excited to learn more. Anything else that we should keep in mind? Is I, we, I, we still need to dissect uh, all the information coming out. There have been so many games that got announced. Uh, but anything else that you think is important for folks to know about the game that they might not realize from what you did in the, the presentation? Um, I think there's some really cool things that we're doing uh, in terms of the locations this time around. So in the, in the first trailer during the show, you know, you've got a, a small glimpse at some of the, uh, the places that we'll be going. Um, all around the world, they've all got a very different vibe, they've all got a very different feel. Um, and I think one thing that's really cool that, that I like as well is that, um, you know, we are talking about the, the story of this trilogy coming to a close. So we're really building on making sure that the narrative is, is in some ways more front and center than it's been in the previous two games. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, of course, making sure that, you know, we always say sandbox is king. So freedom of approach, Everything that you would expect from a Hitman sandbox is absolutely there. And at the same time, we're mixing that in with the, the important story elements being woven together. Uh, and I think players are really going to like that, um, to sort of see 47's journey through this game unravel both through the story, but also through the, their own sort of their playthrough and how we can celebrate them for playing the game in their own way and also being able to enjoy um, the closure to the story, the dramatic conclusion, as we call it. It's, uh, I think it's something that players will re respond really well to. I love that, especially PlayStation fans. I mean, the idea of like narrative is so interwoven, I think, into that brand. And, and obviously, uh, 47 has had a, a long and storied uh, history of, of amazing adventures. And sounds like January 21, we'll get the next ones. Well, guys, thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, I know it's late there. And uh, 
really excited about the announcement, and I'm sure throughout the summer we'll be be hearing more on the game. So uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll see you in person uh, sometime before January if we're lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. There's there is tons right. more to come. We've got lots to say about Hitman Three, so we'll be doing that uh, through the next few months, all the way through till yeah January twenty twenty one, as you said. So cool. All right. Well, yeah, awesome. we've got some summer game fest going on throughout the summer and Gamescom and stuff. So I'm sure we'll be seeing you guys again, and we can't wait to see more on the uh, the title. Thanks for staying with us, guys, and uh, have a good night. Yeah, you Thank too. You Thank so you. Much. Bye bye. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, so that's the big news. Uh, Hitman 3, one of the many games that got announced uh, uh, during the PlayStation press conference. I like um, looking at screenshots, and there's so much going on, uh, so much excitement uh, with these events. But I got to say, for me personally, it was a bit unique to watch this uh, like live on YouTube because I'm usually in these venues um, or in a studio where we're doing these live shows. So it was kind of fun to just watch it like you guys do on YouTube uh, and see all the commentary and everything. And there were certainly millions millions of people watching live on YouTube today, uh, which was really exciting to see the world come around it. Um, all right, we've got more developers coming by um, to talk about uh, PS5, so we're going to move right on to our next guest. And this is a guy that you may remember was on stage with me at the Game Awards last year for Godfall. Um, really excited to have uh, Keith Lee back with me from Counterplay Games. Uh, Keith uh, announced the game really with us uh, at the Game Awards, and uh, it had PlayStation right in there, PlayStation 5, so a lot of people speculated maybe you guys were going to show up in the video, and you certainly did, uh, and we got to see a really in-depth look at the gameplay. So, uh, Keith, great to see you, man. How do you feel? Great. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, we're, we're really happy to, uh, to have you back on again. Uh, we started this story at the Game Awards around Godfall. Um, you know, teased a little bit of it. Uh, now we got to see more of it. So maybe describe, tell us what what did you want to communicate today uh, about Godfall for the first time? Well, first of all, we've just been super excited to showcase that our game is a hybrid of a loot driven action RPG, but then combining that with a third person real time melee combat. So our game is unique in that it's one part skill driven but also one part gear driven. And we're able to leverage a lot of the features for the PlayStation 5. And you're gonna start to see a lot more in the upcoming months. And we've been working a lot with the DualSense as well as some of the 3D audio and exploring how that can make the sensations of melee combat be expressed a lot more on this new console. Yeah, um, tell me about the controller since uh, none of us have been lucky enough to hold one. Um, I assume you guys have some in the office and have been working with the, the haptics. And when I talk to developer friends, everyone keeps discussing how incredible it is. Uh, and it's just so unique with this haptic feedback. And again, you know, I can't describe it because I haven't had a chance to, uh, to, to, to try the controller. But um, what, how does it feel? How is it different than current controllers? How are you using it? I've been using the controller quite a lot and the two big areas that stand out from uh, the previous generation controllers is the resistance on the triggers and also the high performance stereo rumblers that are on the haptics for the controller itself now with the trigger what you can now do is actually use different weapons and to be able to create a different sensation if you're using a long sword versus a bow versus using a great sword or a hammer uh, the area that we're also really excited for is the the rumbler and the way that the vibrations work because they're stereo what we can do is for the first time when you're sliding and dodging you can actually feel different surfaces of gravel versus sand versus tiles. There's the ability to even feel ambient environmental sounds. We want to have the sensation of the clash of steel resonating when uh, you're hitting an enemy. The one functional area that we've been exploring is enemy hit spatial awareness, because now for the first time you can feel if an enemy that's off screen can hit you on the left side or on the right side of you. And we can even do a warning ping so that if an enemy is not in front of you that you can actually hear them about to hit you by using the the vibration and of course our game has a shield 
So we have shield throwing, we have all these capabilities where we can use the resistance to trigger different types of abilities. And of course, to express the weapon classes that we have in our game in a different way when you swing them. That's fascinating. Like, I feel like it's a, it's a whole nother like unit of the team. It used to be like rumble programmers, but tell me like, how do you like, are there people dedicated now to just programming the haptics? Like, it feels like that's like integral now to development. It is. So we do have our developers have full understanding of how to even design each of these vibrations. So you can imagine they're almost like audio waveform files that get right. inputted and ingested based off of the sound that you hear. And then now we can simulate the gravel. We can simulate all the different types of metals that you hit and uh, shape and sculpt that uh, to feel right for you tac tactilely. So there's really no end or limit. Technically, you can have actually almost every vibration, every sound to do a different cue. So it's just more of a balance of what you want to elevate and accentuate in the game to reinforce the sensation of being in combat without wow. being too tiring either. Because yeah. if you're using a bow and your most high damage bow pull t t requires you to pull it back for 10 seconds and you have to hold the resistance very high, you want to make sure that it feels special, that you're not doing it frequently as well. Otherwise, you might, you might actually be getting a bit of a workout. You are getting me even more hyped about the controller and how this is all going to feel. And again, like we're in this weird state, you know, post quarantine, where like we can't actually go hands on with this stuff or talk about it. So we just have to trust you. But you definitely have done a good job selling with the the haptics and the resistance with like steel on steel. And how does that feel? And I mean, that's uh, that's really exciting. Talk about the maybe the audio a little bit, because that's another thing that is probably you know hard to experience. But um, you know, the Tempest engine, Mark Cerny talked a lot about that. Um, how is it? Are you guys using that? Or how does how, how does the game sound different? Or how does the environment sound different on, on PS5? For 3D audio, one of the areas that we want to do for our melee combat game is to give you a sensation of enemies coming up behind you to also warn you the same way with the, the tactile dual sense controllers. Secondly, we want to even simulate the idea of a sword passing through you or an arrow whizzing by and that you can sense that enemies are shooting at you from, from a different distance. So there's a lot here, especially for a melee combat game where the camera is over the shoulder, you have limited view. So areas where we can leverage haptics as well as 3D audio to immerse you is pretty much endless. So to us, it's about how much time we have to, to be able to do some of the coolest things that we want to do in the next few months. Yeah, well, it was great to see the, I know you'd put out that one little sliver of gameplay that we had seen at the end of the year, but like, it's great to see uh, so much action kind of happening um, on screen uh, with this game. And I know, you know, there'll be more to share in the months ahead around it. Um, but you guys sounds like are on track. We'll, we'll see this game later this year. Yes, we will be out holiday 2020 for PlayStation 5. Super excited. Oh, well, it's again, uh, it was fun to have you on stage at Game Awards. Uh, I miss seeing people and having the energy of a crowd, but I thought the event today was really exciting and nice to see you guys in there. And, and hopefully we'll be seeing more of you in the months ahead as we lead up to, uh, to PS5 launch. But yeah, congrats to you and the team. Uh, I know this has been a passion project for a long time, and it's nice to see. Uh, we, we're honored to have you at Game Awards, but then also have more in the uh, the PS5 event today was was really exciting. So hopefully, you guys are are feeling good, and I'm sure you're. You must be. You're have been developing remotely, I guess, for the past couple of months, right? We have. One yeah. interesting thing about counterplay games is that we started the company several years ago to work remotely, and people thought that we were really? definitely pretty more on the crazy side to be able to work on a AAA title completely remotely. So based given the events this year, we were able to transition very smoothly at the flip of a switch. And we, we feel that a lot of the processes and some of the decisions that we made to work completely remotely has, has been really helpful for us. And moving forward, this is a new model in, in which we can build AAA titles remotely. Okay. 
Looks like you got a nice setup there, and I'm sure you probably have your. Do you have your dual sense right there? You're just not showing it. To us. <laughs> we we have some in in the other locked room. Yeah, we have we have a few in in our little vault over on over here. I, I was gonna say maybe that actually should have been my whole mission of the of the post show is get to someone to hold up a dual sense. We'll see if I'm all right. Well, it looks like I'm not getting you to do that. But uh, <laughs> Keith, great to have you here to talk about uh, Godfall and Counterplay. Uh, we look forward to to seeing more of the game and uh, hopefully checking it out this holiday season because it looks phenomenal and the way you describe haptics to me it's like my, my mind is going crazy with uh, excitement <laughs> around how that's going to feel so um you're good you're a good salesman for haptic i'll give you that and your game godfall so keith lee counterplay thanks for joining us uh live here on the uh youtube summer game fest post show Awesome. All right, uh, Keith, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we have more developers coming by to talk about more games. And one of the things that I really admired about Sony's presentation today, uh, and I think it's in it's it's a trend across the industry now. I try and do it at Game Awards. I know Xbox tries to do it, is, is include independent games um, as part of these big presentations. And one of the things I honestly miss right now is being able to travel around the world and meet a lot of these developers. And typically, uh, after E3 every year, I spend a lot of the summer in Europe visiting game teams and meeting small teams and developers who dream of one day being on a stage like the Game Awards. And uh, it's really important to me that we can discover those games. And I thought Sony did a really admirable job today, including obviously some of the biggest franchises out there with Spider-Man and Horizon and Resident Evil, but then a lot of uh, smaller games as well that, uh, you know, who would have thought like this futuristic cat game Stray would have been, you know, featured in this presentation, but there it was. Um, so anyways, we're going to go on now to another one of the games that got announced today that you probably haven't heard of, but uh, Salim is joining us to talk about Goodbye Volcano High. Salim. How are hey, you? Hey, how's it going? I'm good. It's going, it's going pretty good. Congratulations on uh, on your 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 moment there. That must have like tell us a bit about your background and like having this game announced and shown like with PlayStation. Like, how does that? I think a lot of aspiring developers they're like, how does that even happen? Like, tell us the story. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Honestly, I don't even know if I fully processed how I feel right now since this is like such a huge moment for us. Um, we've been making games for almost eight years now as a small, tiny indie studio in Montreal uh, as a, and as a workers co-op where all the team members own the studio together. And we've just been like fully dedicated to being um, just making whatever we believe in, uh, in any way that we can, and really putting ourselves in our games. And so to get to this point and to be recognized by a company like Sony and to get to show our game on the big stage, it's it's just an indescribable feeling. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that, right? That, uh, you know, these games are showcased. And I know, as you said, it's such a, you know, a passion project for these smaller teams mm -hmm. and, and a big moment, much like, you know, I love the Game Awards where we have sort of, you know, smaller teams that get to be up there on a 80 foot screen and the excitement totally. around it. Um, so tell us a bit about um, Goodbye Volcano High. Um, you know, I know obviously it's got this kind of, you know, beautiful kind of animated feel to it. I think a lot of people want to know, well, tell me like what, what it like, tell me how, how does that animation relate to the game? What is the style of play? Like, what can you tell us about sort of the, you know, the vision of what this property is and, and what the game is? Yeah, totally. So we're going to talk a lot about the game over the coming months and and, uh, and reveal a lot more about it. But uh, basically, it's a cinematic narrative game. So uh, we got a lot of questions already on Twitter of like, is this a visual novel? And we're like, no, it's not. Uh, but it's inspired by them. But every shot is animated by us. Every shot is unique. Um, it's, it's so like handcrafted. Um, we're putting so much effort into making it feel as cinematic as possible. And it's uh, really like, we're really inspired by making something like uh, a high-end animated TV show that you could play. So you get to have conversations, you get to choose how, fan, how you're gonna guide Fang through their journey um, yeah. in their final year of high school and uh, all of the things that come with that. So it's told for, like it's in that sort of cell kind of animated cell. So it's told from that perspective, and then you'll kind of is it? Are you is it like real time? You're moving the characters, or it's more like how are you kind of interacting? Yes, 
So uh, you're not moving the characters. Uh, so every shot in our trailer uh, is actually from the gameplay. Uh, so yeah. from a mix of cutscenes and, and conversations. So uh, as you progress through the story, you just have different shots and different conversations, uh, which are all like fully voice acted. And you're choosing different dialogue options as you go through um, to decide how you want to like, which kind of version of fan you want to be and which storyline you want to follow. Interesting. And is it told as like one, like an episodic thing, or just one experience? Or yeah, exactly. It's one. It's one experience. Uh, we have sort of chapters uh, in the game that internally we call episodes, but the game is not episodic. It's it's uh, going to come out, and you're going to have the full arc of Fang's story broken up into multiple chapters. Interesting. I heard something that I, I was like thinking about, like who should I talk about the haptics uh, at PS Five, and someone's like, oh, you should actually talk to Salim about. It. I'm like. That's interesting. Like, I wouldn't have necessarily guessed haptics was going to play a role in this, but you're, you're nodding, so I guess I'm not that off base. But yeah, tell me a bit <laughs> about like how are you using haptics for this game? Yeah, so we're doing this thing that we call haptic storytelling, um, and essentially, I've I've been a big believer in haptics for a really long time. Like since I was a little kid, I was always so psyched to have like a rumble pack or when I got my Dreamcast. Um, and so it's it's been something that I've like really felt very strongly about and having um, things like adaptive triggers and uh, high-end haptics is amazing for storytelling because we can do things as simple as, you know, if you're in a tense moment where Fang is uh, nervous, we can start having a heartbeat uh, on the controller. Or if you're trying to make a decision that Fang isn't really ready to make and you're pushing them towards it, the triggers start to resist your choice selection and you have to kind of press harder or do other actions uh, that the haptics are kind of fighting with you. And so it's kind of an extension of the storytelling uh, that's happening on the screen in your hands to make you feel like you are embodying Fang in that moment wow that's really interesting all right because yeah again all this haptic stuff like i mean you're a gamer like you've played with it like is it is it that big a deal like now that like i haven't yeah you know, most of them haven't tried it but like tell like what is it does it feel like something completely new when you're doing this yeah i think i think especially having adaptive triggers really changes things for me from my perspective i don't i mean obviously high end like like cool haptics have been uh, you've seen them in other platforms, um, yeah. but I think that the thing about them is that when they're done really well, you shouldn't even notice it, you know? It should be something that's just heightening your emotional experience in the game. And yeah. if, if if it's actually drawing too much attention to it, it's actually failing as a storytelling mechanic. Interesting. No, it's right. I think that's probably part of what you want to do is figure out a way to, you know, draw people in, but to not also like be distracting. I think sometimes haptics can also be like overdone, right? Cause it's like, it's trying exactly. too hard exactly. to sort of impress you with stuff. And it's like the subtlety is a little yeah. bit, I'm sure there'll be games yeah. that do way too much and do too little and like it finds something new. But yeah, I think, as you said, it's one of those ones that is interesting because you see that presentation and you know, you don't get any real sense of the haptics is so hard to sh show that visually. Um, so it's kind of exciting that we can get, you know, see these games, hear about them from you guys, see these trailers, and then realize that there's sort of more layers and dimensions to it. So um, that's really cool. So you guys are, where are you at in development of the game? Like you're announcing it now, but how, how long have you been working on it? So we've been working on it for the past two and a half years, and wow. we are coming out at some point next year. Um, okay. So I'm really excited about that. I can say, well, it's a, I said such a big moment. Um, for you guys to, you know, have this showcased in front of literally millions and millions of people on the, uh, the PlayStation presentation. So I'm sure your your phone's been lighting up with text and the team. How big is the team? Uh, the team making this game is about 15 to 18 people. Wow. Okay, cool. And all, all up in Montreal? Yeah. Uh, some of our uh, some of our coworkers are actually around the world. Okay, I was gonna say, probably, and you know, everything's virtual <laughs> these days, so all the yeah, more reason. Exactly. But yeah, look, I, I I appreciate you coming on, telling us a bit about the game. Uh, I'm sure we can fo fo follow you guys on social and start to find out more about it. I'm sure because you have lots to say if you've been hiding it for two and a half years. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Liam. Great to have. Uh, got to get a Canadian developer in here, right? You know me. It's like got to do a little bit of that. All right. Well, uh, that was exciting. Uh, Another game that was sort of uh, not expected, but really nice to see inside that uh, PlayStation presentation. Um, and now we're going to move on to another uh, game that falls in the camp of something unexpected and very fun. Uh, Aaron from Grain Crumbs was talking a lot about this at our post-interview. Um, now we have Seth joining us to talk about Bug Snacks, 
um, by Young Horses, the guys behind Octodad. Um, oh, what's happening, Seth? Hello. How we doing? How we doing? Good. I'm very it's going excited good. to you be look, here. You look lit up. You got your keyboard there. <laughs> this was uh, so. Yeah. Let's start. I mean, you guys obviously knew you were doing this in the show. Um, everything was so top secret and exciting. Um, how do you feel now? I mean, after watching that and being included in that presentation. Um, I feel pretty great. I, honestly, like my phone like blew up immediately and I was sure. kind of like trying not to tear up, you know, while getting ready to be on here. So. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I said there were millions and millions of people watching yeah. and, and Octodad, uh, you know, a fun game. Uh, Shuhei Yoshida is one of his favorites. Um, and Kyle Bossman was a fan too, I think. Um, and I was too. I thought you guys did an incredible uh, job with that. So, Bug Snacks, tell us a bit about the game. I mean, it's such a a fun trailer that just ultimately grabs you and gets you excited about the world. Um, but if people, you know, some people probably have played Octodad and are excited about the next thing, Ring Horses, but others may not have. So, how would you describe the type of game? Um, so basically, you get invited, like you as the player, get invited out to Snack Tooth Island. Uh, uh, basically sold this story of that there's these legendary bug snacks and you, and you get there, you get invited by Elizabeth Megafig, the leader of this like group of misfits that's out on this island. And yeah. uh, you get there and no one is around. Like you, you run into a couple of the, a couple of the characters and you know, Elizabeth isn't anywhere. So you're like uh, kind of discovering um, you, you know, you're meeting like this, this big cast of characters. We have like a 12 character ensemble cast. Um, so you're meeting these characters, learning about Lisbert and like interviewing them as you go. And then uh, none of them seem to be able to catch bug snacks for themselves. So you, you they, you kind of get uh, nominated to be the, the hunter for them. So you're, you're exploring these like giant biomes. Um, as you can see from the trailer, there's a few of them. Um, and just using using like uh, wacky physics traps to catch the different snacks, and they all kind of have like a different, uh, you know, like a, a little bit of a puzzle to them. So you're you're um, try watching, observing the bug snacks' behavior, and trying to figure out exactly how you can lure them into your trap. Looks so fun. Uh, so tell us about working on PlayStation Five for this. You guys obviously did Octodad on a bunch of platforms, but also PS4. Um, what's it been like making it for, for PS5? Um, on my end, it's been pretty exciting um, because, honestly, I wasn't super involved in the in the PlayStation 4 um, stuff for Octodad, but uh, yeah. I've been able, I've been working on the, the haptics uh, and the uh, using sounds out of the controller speaker um, pretty extensively, and it it honestly like I'm very excited about it. Well, yeah, because let's I mean let's talk. You got you see you got Octodad there. You got your keyboard. So tell us a bit about the the music. Aaron was saying how excited he is about uh, you know music and what you guys are doing musically. So tell us about the vibe and tone and and what we can expect on that front. Um, the tone of the music is very much like I'm using. Uh, it's very like screechy synths um, using a lot of um, fun fun instruments. I'm, I'm looking to the side because they're sitting next to me. But, um, you know, very much the vibe of the music of the, the, the song that Caro Caro Bonito did for the trailer um, is is uh, kind of the pocket that the game music is in it. You know, it's just really fun, bright. Um, and, and you know, there's a there's several different tracks for each for each area that you're in. Yeah, it looks uh, really fun and, and light and heartfelt, which is what we've come to expect from you guys, a little bit of what the world needs right now. Um, where are you at in development of it? Um, we're, we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, it, you know, we're starting to, obviously this is like a big milestone for us, but um, you know, we can see the end of the tunnel. We're getting pretty close and it's, uh, it's nerve wracking and exciting at the same time. Well, it's, uh, it's awesome to see that game in there. It was, uh, I gotta say, I love some of the bright and colorful games, and there are a lot of violent games, but yeah, like Ratchet and Clank and Bug Snacks and all these things just look like so fun. Um, and the diversity of games, I think, is really important uh, yeah. to you know reach the widest possible audience. So, um, really excited to see what you guys are doing with it, and we, uh, yeah, we can't wait to to see some more, um, which I'm sure will be coming over the summer. So, uh, yeah, we're excited to share more. I was gonna say you could just 
turn over right now and play something on your keyboard, but we didn't, we didn't plan that. So. Oh, it's not plugged in yet. <laughs> okay. Convenient excuse. All right. Well, we'll do that. Maybe do that next time. But Seth, thanks so much for uh, dropping by and uh, sharing a little bit of uh, info on uh, Bug Snacks with us. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing more soon. Thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Thanks very much, Seth. We're just rolling through people. This is just, just like E3 sort of in a way, um, although we're all doing it virtually. But this has, I got to say, personally, has been really fun for me. Uh, to be able to still do something a little bit like this. Uh, I was early this year, I was kind of sad that we might not, I might not go to E3, then there was an E3, and we didn't know how we were going to kind of gather and do this. And it's different, but it's been kind of fun. Uh, and again, this is like what we all live for, these big moments that get excited about the future of the industry. And no matter what your platform preference is, you have to look at what Sony did today and say, all right, that was like pretty exciting about the future of games. Um, and, you know, Xbox will do that in July, and hopefully we'll hear more from Nintendo soon, and there's there's a lot more coming. Um, and I'm privy to some of the other things that will be happening this summer and, and, and later this year, and it's it's going to be a really good year, I think, overall for, uh, for gaming fans. So um, don't worry. You might not get everything you want immediately at the start of Summer Game Fest, but give us until the end of summer, and I think there'll be some really exciting things um, happening. All right, our next guest uh, coming in is uh, Julian, and he's gonna tell oh we got all right we got a trailer actually we got an exclusive trailer for you guys to look at uh this next game uh tribes of midgard check this out didn't get god awards today but you got tribes of midgard uh we're excited to have julian uh with us uh another canadian developer just happens to be i have to have a couple requisite canadian developers in all my shows so uh julian uh Marota is joining us to talk about all things tribes of Midgard. Yes, hey, julian how you doing i'm doing great thanks yeah thanks for joining us here uh yeah, pretty exciting day <clears throat> for um games and gamers around the world uh Tribes of Midgar, we saw that trailer. Uh, this is something that uh, you know you guys, I know, have been doing some tests already on PC around this game and letting people kind of uh, see and experience it. So for folks that may not be familiar with it, tell us a bit about um, what the game is. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in the Norse mythology, you've probably heard of, of Ragnarok, and that's the apocalypse where the gods and the giants will fight against one another. And at Norsefell, we were really inspired by this tale, and we wondered, what would it be like to be a human during those crazy events? And that was really the starting point of uh, Tribes of Midgard, a game in which uh, players will have to thrive in the wilderness and become a Viking legend in, the, in order to defend their village against enemy forces during Ragnarok. Yeah, um, it, it has a beautiful art style, a really interesting look and feel to it. Um, tell us about the gameplay and what the experience is when you're in, in the game and, and, and mm -hmm. how you play it. Absolutely. So as you saw on, on the trailer, you can play with, uh, with uh, several, several players. Um, so you can play up to 10 players, but you can also play solo. So the mid is completely, um, game is completely made for that. And uh, yeah, as you explore the wild, you will gather resources, craft things, encounter merchants, all kinds of creatures that you can fight, you can specialize in a the class. There is a whole lot to it. Um, and all the while this is happening, what's important to remember is that there is 
at the, um, there is a village which has uh, a tree of life, Yggdrasil, at the center of it, a seed of it. And every night there is an attack that will occur on that village. So you need to get back and protect it. And all of the while this is happening, even more importantly, you sometimes have uh, giant proper Jotun appearing in Midgard and walking towards uh, your village to destroy that tree. So you have to take them down uh, before they reach that village. Wow. Now, I know you've been doing some early uh, you know, tests on Steam with some fans coming to PlayStation 5 as well. So tell us a bit about you know, working on PS5 and, and how, how you're taking advantage of the PS5 for this game. Yeah, absolutely. So, so something that was extremely important for us is the way we, uh, we developed the game and we call it continuous development. Uh, why, what we mean by that is that uh, we developed the game right with the community right from the beginning, basically. Um, so even though the game is not coming out before 2021, we uh, actually uh, already did three closed alphas, three open betas, and one uh, large-scale private test with our Mid-Guardian, so that's our ambassador program. Um, so you can definitely check it out. But that has allowed us to gather a lot of feedback and orient the development of the game based on what the community wants. And it has allowed us to get a lot of eyeballs too, and we have large streamers such as Forsen um, already playing the game. So yeah, um, it's it's been great to, uh, to be able to present the game at a very early stage um, before even coming out uh, yeah, in 2021. Yeah, no, I get it. I love the the look and feel of it. A lot of developers today in the post show have been talking about the controller and the haptics. <laughs> and can you maybe talk a bit about like how you're gonna use yeah. some of the PlayStation technologies? Yeah, the, the haptics is, is also my my all time favorite. I'm a, I'm a big believer in in, in uh, yeah controller vibration. So 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 yeah, as uh, as Keith and Salim were saying, uh, it's been it's been great to uh, to to play around with that. We have plenty of ideas, and we'll share more um, in the future. Um, I can say that yeah, we've been discussing with Sony for a while, and uh, they actually were really excited about a paper pitch for <laughs> for Tribes of Midgar back in 2018, and we've been discussing with them since then, and so that's why. Um, um, yeah, we've been with them. That's why we're with them now, given that we've been with them for so long before. Yeah. Well, it's exciting. It was a big day. Uh, what did you, taking your game hat off and just looking at it as an industry, like what did you, what did you think of the presentation? Because there was a lot of cool stuff in there, right? Yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, a couple of games that uh, came out that, uh, that I'm really intrigued by. Uh, there is uh, Kenna. Uh, for yep. sure, uh, Ghostwire was was one that that really struck me too. Uh, but overall, I think uh, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, having everyone, the whole um, gaming industry, uh, come together for this moment that was something very special, despite all of the events around the world. So I think, yeah, in that sense, um, they did a great job. Um, job is is achieved, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be more happy to be a to be partnering with them and with Gearbox because that was also part of, of our reveal announcement is that, yeah, we're partnering with Gearbox for this game. Awesome. All right. So Gearbox got Godfall and now also uh, yeah, yeah, you guys yeah. Uh, tribes with Garrett. Uh, it's all about awesome. the looting stuff and, and the relationship with Gearbox has been fantastic. Um, we, uh, as we were getting uh, more traction around tribes of Midgard, we were looking for a partner to really re realize our vision and uh, yeah. being able to uh, have constant um, exchange with Gearbox over the course of a year, we knew then that they were um, the ideal partner to actually get this uh, get this done and, and carry out our vision. So yeah, we've been extremely happy with, uh, with uh, how things have gone. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much for, for giving us a little sneak peek there at the game. My pleasure. Uh, um, there is a lot more to come, um, and uh, yeah, I can I can tell you to uh, to um, well, announce that the game is going to come out in 2021 uh, on PS5 and PC, and that uh, you can actually already wishlist it on Steam right now. Um, don't forget to uh, follow us on all of our social media channel. And if you wondered what was that singing in the trailer that you heard, and what were they singing, well, head over to Discord, and our community manager will take care of you. All right, that's I love it. You got you got some action <laughs> items here for fans. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Fantastic. All right, well, thanks so much uh, for joining us, Julian. Uh, really great to see the game uh, today, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing more in the, the months ahead. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Take care. All bye right, bye. one of the games uh, Julian mentioned is a game that we're going to talk to talk about now, Kenna. And this come you probably saw that in the presentation. Looks incredible. It's made by this company you probably haven't heard of called Ember Lab. Um, and joining us now from Ember are the two brothers that you saw in the video, uh, Josh and Mike, um, to tell us about uh, what they're working on. So, uh, guys, thanks for joining us here uh, live um, for 
the post show. So first of all, congratulations, guys. How does it feel? Thank you. Um, it's surreal, to be honest. Uh, you know, the team's been working on it for a long time, and uh, it's just been amazing to see the feedback and uh, being able yeah. to actually share it with the world. Yeah, same. I was going to say, like, you've, you got, know, been you've got lots of art up there. there. We want to know more about it. So tell us about, like, there's so much to unpack here. It looks absolutely incredible visually. So I think everyone wants to know, like, what's the story of Ember Lab? Like, who are you guys? Who makes up the team? Like, give us a little bit of background. For sure, yeah. Um, we're a small team. You know, we're about 15 people here in Los Angeles in the studio. Uh, before COVID, obviously, uh, we were all working in the studio. Um, but, you know, our background is in film and animation, and we did a lot of uh, commercial work before we... Um, switched over to games. So we were uh, making, you know, animated commercials for big global brands for a long time. And <clears throat> we always wanted to do our own creative content. Um, and so in between jobs, we always took time to work on some passion projects um, that started with a short film called Dust. And then uh, probably where people might have heard of us is from our um, Majora's Mask fan film. Um, that was one of our, uh, you know, passion projects that we, we did. And then right from there, we jumped into developing Kana. And, um, you know, we were fortunate to get to be able to partner with Sony, and they've been huge champions of the game. And um, we've been in development for a couple of years now, and you know, looking forward to getting, sharing more about the game. Yeah, it's an amazing visual. Like this thing that grabs everyone. It's like a team of 15s doing something that looks that incredible. So tell us a bit about like your production pipeline. Like, how are, is this? I assume it's is it Unreal or something, or how are you guys building this game? Like, what, what is it? Yeah, yeah, we're in, we're in UE4, um, and even though our local team is pretty small. We have about, like Josh had 15 developers. We do have artists and sort of, um, you know, teams around the world that we've been working with throughout the years. And so they, they really help support, you know, the vision and like helping us punch above our weight class a little bit in terms of like what we can pull off with such a small team. So, you know, even though our internal team is pretty small, those, the outsourcing uh, partners have been a big help to push the visuals for sure. Yeah. But yeah, is it, we're in Unreal 4. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah it looks, uh, I mean, Incredible, and I love that you showed, it showed gameplay as well, so it wasn't just sort of a, a cinematic um, adventure. Yeah. But yeah, like let's talk about this game. Obviously, a new IP, new character. Uh, this is, you said, the first you know game project that you guys are really doing coming from uh, a film background, but obviously big game fa uh, fans if you do Majora's Mask yeah. uh, fan film. So what kind of game did you want to build? Like what what is different about this game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we're obviously inspired by, you know, Nintendo sort of like, Disney Pixar combo uh, in terms of like things that we're drawn to, um, but we wanted to you know capture you know, a good story. Um, we want there's a lot of emotional weight to what's going to happen as you experience this game as a player. Um, and then we're big combat fans, so we wanted to make sure our combat was on point. And um, the little the little creatures, little black guys, these guys, little rock creatures, is sort of like our secret sauce. Uh, you, you use them in everything from like you know solving puzzles and manipulating the environment to uh, when you're engaging with enemies. So uh, the the kind of the, the, the rule book kind of flows like the more you have sort of the most the more tools you have in your in your pocket to kind of use against the the enemies and uh, manipulate the environment so um, these guys are kind of our secret sauce and they're kind of what make the game special in my mind yeah but yeah it looks like there are a lot of things that make it special it's <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean I just look at like the fidelity of what you're doing um, and you know it looks like really fluid tell us about working on PS5, uh, you know, we've heard yeah. about the SSD and the IO, the haptics, like you guys have had a chance to, to work on this. Like, yeah. what is PS5 allowing you to do on this game that is is unique or you think kind of pushes the medium forward? Yeah, I mean, definitely the haptics are a great fit for our game in particular because she has a bow and you have a lot of environmental manipulation uh, that's going on. Um, so it, it's been a really unique experience to develop with, with the haptics and just allows the immersion um, to be expanded. That's something that we try to do in all of our projects is really make it immersive and in a way that feels completely natural. You know, the haptics um, are just a nice, just a great, perfect level of addition that take it over the top. So um, it's been really fun developing for the, with the haptics and, and, and looking at those tools, but maybe you can talk to more. Yeah, I mean, the 3D audio is actually a big one as well. Yeah. Um, you know, just the sounds of the environment and you know pushing that sort of immersion as well i think it's something that can easily be overlooked but i do think that's going to be a pretty standout feature yeah the haptics are you know the ones that because it's you know the new cool controller and everything uh, i mean they're great but i think it's the whole package it's the haptics it's the 3d audio 
Um, and then the SSD is, is pretty amazing. It does allow us to do a little bit more in terms of like, um, you know, getting environments to stream in faster and not having to worry about, you know, um, those streaming volumes as much. Um, and then for, for us personally, just getting more of the, the rock characters on screen was a big win. Yeah. Uh, with a little more hardware power, you know, just all around, we were able to push their numbers up because it was important for us to keep, keep it one-to-one -one with what you've collected, you know, as much as we could. Yeah. So. Yeah, I could see that with the you like rock character. You said like it feels like there are a lot of them already, and I'm sure you yeah. get to a point where yeah. there are many of them. Well, how do they? Sure. How do you control them, or how, like how do you gather them? Like, tell us a bit about the mechanic of like how you interact with those characters. Yeah, so you you basically you know you start off with with zero of them, and you kind of grow them over the course of the game. They are persistent, so like as you collect one, he's like a part of your group forever. Um, and there's a couple modes of control. Uh, there's like what we call like rot action, which is like our it's really useful in combat. It's your way to like quickly send the group or part of the group to attack an enemy or to go interact with an object. Um, and then we have a couple of different modes of more like tangible, which wasn't in the, tra in the trailer, but more tangible interaction points where you can form them into like a group and then you can manipulate them to kind of like uh, grow the environment or like cut through corruption and things like that. Um, so there, it's a little contextual, a little bit of um, in sort of like control depending on the situation and what object you're interacting with. And they also right. enhance your abilities. So right, right. In, yeah. um, in combat, they're great because you can, you know, uh, add them into your abilities. You know, charge up, can, uh, enhance Kana's bow or melee attacks and things like that. So yeah, they're they're pretty versatile and um, they come alive in the environment. You know, the, the team's done a great job of integrating them into the world really well. So you know, you got this posse following you, but then you also see them kind of, you know, going to interesting things in the environment. You know, playing around in fountains, doing very silly, fun stuff. So their personality just is exploding everywhere, but they really just kind of yeah, bring this journey to like a more of a uh, collaboration uh, between you. And yeah, the whenever we can, we try to like do like, we call it like alley-oop. So like the rock got do a thing and then the player has to follow up. So that's sort of like when that's working, it feels the best. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, the ambition of what you're doing is incredible. How are you telling the story? Like obviously the cinematic, you know, look was incredible, but like, are you, are there cutscenes, or is it all in engine, or are you doing it with voice? Like, how are you kind of t taking us through this world? Yeah, it's a mixture of, of both, like all of the above. So we do have like ah. you know traditional cutscenes, um, and then there's there's a lot of you know in game narration that happens in sort of like you know a big part of the loop is um, you know we didn't go too much into the story, but a big part of the loop is you know as Kana, you're basically a spirit guide. So she's kind of like come to this abandoned village and there are lots of spirits that are trapped here you know people that need help moving on um, so that's what she does so a big part of the loop is sort of uncovering the mystery of what happened to this this abandoned village and then why these these characters are stuck here um, so you know the kids that, you, that are featured heavily in the trailer um, they kind of like pull you into the into the narrative but then from there it kind of branches out um, and there's a you know decent amount of other characters that you're going to be interacting with and learning about how all their stories sort of tie together you know Wow. Yeah. I just, again, I keep looking at this trailer and like you expect this to be from a, a massive, you know, studio and the fact that yeah. you guys are you're doing this is, is really, I mean, super impressive um, yeah. and exciting to see like a new IP that looks so fresh and, and so visually dazzling, um, which is great. So where, where are you at in, in development of the game right now? Yeah. I mean, the, the end is in sight. Uh, we're, we're targeting holiday um, this year to release. Um, wow. And, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've been in development for, well, we're going, we're in our third year right now. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a long road, you know, COVID and everything is with everyone, you know, changes things and um, yeah. you adapt, but it's just, uh, it's been part of the process. <laughs> so. No, yeah. I mean, I think people hear holiday, like that's exciting. And I think one of the things that I've, I'm just realizing and talking to a lot of the developers is that a lot of the games shown today, like they're not things that are three or four years off, it feels like it's stuff that's in the near term, at least in the next like year or two, which is, is yeah, nice yeah. to see. And sometimes I feel like we, you know, you, you set the bar so far and so high that it's like, hey, you know, here's we're announcing it and it's coming in five years. The fact that you guys are saying, hey, this is real and a game of that fidelity is coming this holiday, uh, especially even they said, given the, the pandemic and the, the world we live in right now is pretty, uh, pretty incredible. So yeah, you, you did a good job keeping it, keeping it a secret, I guess. Yeah, it's been tough. Honestly, we've been you know, it's hard. It's hard on the team as well, just keeping it so close to the chest, and everyone just wants to know, you know, what you're working on. And being radio silent for so long is never fun. But it, it was, I mean, it was really cool to to be able to hold on to, to for this event. Yeah. 
um, yeah. it, you know, it's something special for sure. Oh, for sure. Well, I'm sure your Twitter followers are lighting up and people are yeah. uh, discovering you guys for the first time. I gave you a follow, so uh, check them out. You follow me back, so thank you guys. Yeah, uh, for sure. Ember good. Lab, uh, that's one of the things I love about this industry is that a small team like yours can kind of show up inside of this presentation. And the work is just judged on the work, right? No one knows kind yeah. of if people have made games before or not or how big the team is or what the budget is. And you certainly showed something that to me really held up incredibly well against um, stuff from yeah. games that have uh, budgets that I'm sure are orders of magnitude larger um, than yours. So uh, it's exciting. And I really like the world and the character. I'm super intrigued to learn more about it and, right. uh, and get a chance to, to hopefully play it soon. So um, congratulations to you guys. Uh, I know it's I'm sure it's a big day for everyone on the team. And uh, yeah. we appreciate you popping by to share a little more details on the game with us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's great to talk to you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Ember yeah, Lab, they are on the rise and a uh, big day for that team uh, revealing their game for the first time, uh, which is really exciting. So um, that's all we've got for you guys today in terms of developer interviews. Um, there are many other developers hitting us up now saying they'd love to come on and I wish we could do more. Um, this all came together very quickly, um, as you guys know, uh, for the right reasons, Sony rescheduled the event and Things were very secretive, so um, there's much more to share. But the good news is that this is all part of Summer Game Fest. Uh, you know, this new thing I came up with this summer to celebrate games. So there are going to be lots more um, events and moments to talk to developers. Uh, we'll, you know, we're, we're doing lots more live streams um, across the summer. So uh, head to summergamefest.com if you guys want to see all the events that are coming up um, over the coming weeks and months. Uh, there'll be lots more to, time to share, and even some of these developers that are hitting us up, we can't do them live now, but I'm happy to do interviews with them um, in the coming weeks to, to talk about their games as well. Um, there'll be much more to share, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back uh, with more streams in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll all, you know, Xbox, as I think you know, we'll have an event in July, so we're looking forward to streaming that live on YouTube. And then uh, at the end of August. Uh, I'll be doing my big Gamescom opening night live event again uh, on August 27th that will be airing live everywhere. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of the games we saw today, more details on those, but we've got a lot of other big games and surprises um, for that. So I think it's going to be a really good summer. Um, I know it's different than past years where everything was kind of locked into three or four days at E3, uh, but I look at, you know, we're only six weeks into this summer uh, and there's a lot more time to go and a lot more surprises. So um, it's going to be really, really exciting. But look, today we got the reveal of the PlayStation 5 hardware for the first time. Um, we had seen the controller, but uh, let's watch that as we, we get ready to wrap up here of what the PS5 looks like. And this is coming holiday of 2020 and it's pretty exciting to get a look at the hardware and all those games as part of it so um it's exciting for me to have ps5 uh out there and more than anything look at the future of the industry so um it's exciting to have all of you guys join us from around the world to be a part of this uh millions and millions of people watching all the streams across all the platforms um I think we were all ready to get excited about the future of games. And uh, I think this event definitely was able to, to do that. Um, and there's only going to be more, right? I think, you know, even the Miles game from Insomniac, we only got a very brief glimpse at that, right? And I'm sure there'll be more to share on that. Um, and many of these other games, uh, there's lots more to learn. So I, I don't know if you, you can count up the number of games that got announced today, but it feels like it was well more than a dozen new titles. Um, that got announced for the first time. So there's tons of updates on those games and many other games that uh, we'll be hearing about across the summer um, from various other events um, and other platforms as well and publishers. Uh, you know, next week, EA will be doing their EA Play event, um, which will be happening. And there'll be, um, you know, other publishers kind of throughout the summer sharing more information. But there it is, the PlayStation 5 uh, hardware um a lot of people have been asking can you lie it on its side or not i mean there are things like that that we'll we'll have to figure out and maybe one day i'll be lucky enough to have like a dual sense or a ps5 i can hold up here for you guys and do an unboxing or something i guess i'm more of a youtuber now if i'm talking about unboxings but uh anyways it's really exciting to see what ps5 looks like i think they hit it out of the park at least with the design of the console which looks really exciting and different um and Fascinating. So uh, much more to learn 
and much more coverage will be coming up on YouTube as part of our Summer Game Fest. Thanks for joining us today. I know this was different than normal. Uh, you know, for most of my career, I've always been used to doing a big flashy set at E3, whether it's on TV or for YouTube this year. We weren't able to do that, but I want to thank everyone at YouTube uh, for allowing us to kind of bring this together in a new format. Um, it was fun for me, and it, it actually kind of was a comfort of, of comfort for me to be able to do this and have a lot of friends on and developers and bring the community together around what was a great event. So hopefully there'll be more of this across the summer. Um, thanks for, for following along and watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Hope everyone is safe and healthy and uh, feeling okay about uh, things because I know it's been uh, emotionally a lot to go through over the past few months. But um, it sounds like the holidays are going to be pretty fun with uh, all these games and new consoles coming. So stick around. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our team, uh, Augie, my producer, and the team at Stage 10 that put this whole thing together in uh, record time. Um, amazing it all worked. And uh, thanks again to YouTube and for PlayStation. Uh, and to PlayStation for putting this uh, this great event on today. We will see you soon for more Summer Game Fest. Head to summergamefest.com to sign up for notifications uh, and make sure to follow me on Twitter where I'm always sharing about the latest video game news. Uh, I'm Jeff Keeley. Thanks for watching. We will see you again soon right here on YouTube. Have a good day, night.